Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. When I saw her for the first time, it was love at first sight. I love how rich and complex she is, how sharp and principled her first steps, how graceful her movement. Paris is a city of love. I've come to find my love for the French defense. E5, it's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against 1E4, based on 1E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique move trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshal Gambit against the Spanish, with three Knight F6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there, Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on Chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5, Patsers. Hi everyone, welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. 
Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the Hyolovic, his non-chess team. So I see some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand. And we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app.
Hello and welcome to the second day of the finals of the Belgrade Grand Prix, uh, the second leg out of uh, three. I'm still Peter Svidler and with me uh, still is the one and only voice of chess himself, uh, Lauren Strand. I haven't been called that in a long while, Peter. I yeah, appreciate have it. Have you ever actually been called that by anybody but yourself? Is no. It's still, uh, a very, it's still a very valid thing to call you. I mean... I I, mean it was a big marketing ploy at the time, and it kind of worked out while I was a bit more active. But was, we can bring was, it back. Obviously, I am kind of being uh, being somewhat unpleasant to you here, but I, I I never I never really thought it was it was necessarily wrong. It's just it, it was it was uh, a phrase. Anyway, oh. uh, we can we can get back to to you know gently we can gently yes. ribbing Lawrence on all on all kinds of topics. Uh, uh, somewhat later in the show. Uh, for now, uh, we have this game to look forward to. There's only one game left, this being the finals and no match uh, for third place to uh, to think of. Uh, yesterday they played a somewhat... Uh, yeah, Lauren's doing the the blinking thing between the between the backgrounds. The screen change, yeah, we just got to get it on point. We're yeah, good, we're good, we're good. Uh, yesterday, yesterday's game was frankly somewhat uneventful, even though uh after i've seen the the first eight moves of it i really thought we we might be here for a very very short time yes yeah it did seem to me that it's it's entirely possible that the entire game from start to finish will a take like 25 minutes and b potentially repeat something that has already been played <laughs> and instead they played an independent game just for, from a from a starting variation mm -hmm. that is extremely extremely you know draw heavy uh and yeah for uh for those of you who may perhaps not have been here uh yesterday and did not uh look the game up on draken with the white pieces played what is currently i think the driest uh and the safest way to even play a very safe opening to begin with like the four knights is is generally a very very sound but very very safe and kind of uninspiring opening these days and bishop d2 is an attempt basically to claim you're slightly better in this end game as it stands right now this is a position you're pretty much getting by move 17 and uh yeah richard made it into a little bit of a contest by not repeating what is supposedly the the main line here which uh many people including the world champion uh himself uh, on our show during uh Vikanze, uh are claiming that uh, this is just a forest draw, but he did make the draw uh, eventually. And today, the situation is quite straightforward. He has the white pieces, uh, and uh, this is the last classical game of the final. Whoever wins this wins the entire uh, leg of the Grand Prix. If there is a draw today, uh, they will play uh, a series of uh, play of games tomorrow, starting with two games of 15 plus 10. Yeah, thank you, Satiris, for. Uh, for the graphic, uh, starting with two games of 20, uh, 15 plus 10, and then immediately two games of 3 plus 2, and then straight after that, no repetition of time controls or anything, immediately an Armageddon 5 against 4, uh, with Black getting the draw odds, and I think... I still haven't really looked this up, even though we discussed it with Jan on air briefly. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about the uh, increment from move 61 for the Armageddon, uh, we'll clarify that if we actually get to that spot, but uh, that makes a large bit of difference to what the odds are, are for, for the Armageddon, I think. But we are very, very far away from from there uh, as of right now. Uh, so yeah. uh, that's sort of the intro. Uh, what do we think about what to expect today? Well, I think we're not going to get... The same as yesterday, that's for sure. I think we're going to get a uh, a much Negation, more yes, yeah. uh, uh, sort of elongated uh, game of sorts. Mm. I think I think I think Richard will think yesterday was really a free day for him. Yeah, he had to spend a little bit of time being a little bit accurate at certain moments, but in general, it wasn't the most taxing game for him to make a draw. Now he's got white, and he can put the thing to bed. And I think he probably thinks that. He's not underdog in a, in a playoff. I don't think he thinks that. But I think he would quite like to put this tournament to bed today. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And uh, important things. First, thanks very much for the raid dodgy and all the dodgy. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
uh, sub noobs says says dodgy and uh, thank you for the six month uh, uh, let me let me find that no uh, uh appreciate the support and uh, welcome to the channel we actually mentioned this position yesterday surprisingly we did uh, yeah, yeah because the game itself was sort of so clearly going to be a draw from a certain moment on then we started discussing like what will happen after they finally give up the ghost and you know agree a draw and we started talking about uh, the the potential openings that might happen and Andrekin played this in this tournament uh already against uh Sam Shankland and he's also been playing this uh previously as well so uh he does seem to stick to uh stick to his guns uh, in terms of opening theory uh, and uh, this line, we discussed it with Jan as well when we were covering the round in which the uh, Shankland and Draken game happened, uh, or possibly with Alejandro that day. Um, it looks weird. You kind of instantly feel like it shouldn't work, but I think it currently stands quite well. Uh, and by well, I mean you are probably going to be ever so slightly worse, but you're not going to be in like tremendous amounts of troubles. A trouble and uh, uh, Andrekin very much a believer in uh, in, in this uh, in this approach. So what Black is doing here is basically saying I will play a six now. Uh, D takes C four is probably a legitimate threat uh, with B seven B five potentially coming after. So you have to address the fact that your pawn is hanging here most likely, which very often provokes White to take on D five, and we get a pure Carlsbad structure where Black will probably play C seven C six. And Black have, has wasted, arguably, a tempo on a7, a6, but uh, compared to, let's say, the old line where the Carlsbad structure, apart from the pure Carlsbad, this is the structure you normally get, Black has not committed to bishop e7, so very often this bishop gets developed to d6 later, and a6 in Carlsbad's is not a horrible move at all, if you consider the fact that uh, you know the, 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 the minority attack on, on the queen side is often something that White wants to do. And we've already kind of pre-prepared for it by controlling the b5 square uh, in advance. Uh, as I mentioned, it really does look extremely silly to not be developing anything on move three here, uh, but it stands it stands fine. It it doesn't. I'm pretty sure it doesn't equalize uh, mathematically. Like engines, I'm pretty sure don't give it zero zero zero. Mm -hmm. But in practical terms, the kinds of positions that you're getting in this line are for a certain type of player who doesn't mind to be perhaps solid but somewhat passive out of the opening are completely playable uh have you tried yes. doing any of that yeah i have tried a6 once i tried it against and you know what happened he did something against me he played i can't remember exactly but he played some early queen b3 against me and I'm trying to recall how that not not I don't think it was could it it couldn't it can't have been here even, even here it's actually a very playable move yeah uh, and uh, the the intention Ooh, if I'm you, gonna look it up because I can't yeah. I can't actually remember do do they a quick someone get trans his notes yeah. yeah we finally get to we get to uh, see you consult consult your fabled notes on yeah on, let me just check my notes because I mean obviously I've got tons of stuff uh, on on this particular line. Okay, uh, no, this is one of the lines that I really haven't done that much, but I did play it, and I am curious. I can't even remember who I played it against. This mm. is, it's probably not even. No, it doesn't even come up, does it? That's how obscure it is. Um, C D E D. Oh, what did he do? I think Sam played Knight of Three here just to kind of return it to uh, Knight of Planet Earth a little bit. I think yeah. Sam played Knight of Three and Black played uh, some kind of a setup with Bishop E6, Bishop D6, and and so was on. Was it was it Bishop G5, Bishop E6, Queen B3? Yeah, is, 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 is yeah this a... exists. This exists. I think Sam played E3, uh, Bishop D6, and uh, uh, they played this position. Uh, I can probably look it up, but yeah. It's all completely irrelevant now because Richard, for honestly reasons unexplained to me, has gone for the move A to A3, uh, which I will struggle to explain. A to A3 in this exact position has been played. It has been, yeah. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, this is some kind of next level stuff. I I really really don't don't know what we're trying Goodness to do. Goodness me! This. I what assume, is this move? I assume some kind of a point is if Knight of Six happens, we get to play pretty much a pure Carl's bot with the inclusion of a six and a three, which I guess you can make an argument is slightly better for white because I still I mean even even that is not clear to me because a six is definitely not a very bad move in Carl's bots for reasons I've outlined earlier. Like if we end up uh, like if you if you consider some kind of a really like a old style pure Carl's bot type position, uh white very often goes for some kind of uh, rook b1 uh, before type of uh, type of play and having pawns on c6 and a6 is really not going to be bad at all in this position it really will not harm black uh in any way whereas the pawn on a3 since we are playing rook b1 and then playing before anyway uh you probably don't need the pawn on a3 to push before so i'm i'm very confused by this i i have a feeling it's a it's a i mean <clears throat> first of all uh I guess the way to explain this move is this is a, a move that doesn't spoil anything and it makes your opponent think for 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think that actually is, it, it will sound kind of derogatory and, and slightly insulting, but it really isn't. It's a, if you don't think anything really gives you a lot in this position, a move that gives you sort of the same amount of advantage or perhaps slightly fewer fewer percentage points compared to the main lines of, I don't know, Knight of 3 or suddenly the, the arrows are green. I have no idea how that happened. Why are you green? Oh, you're no longer green. Excellent. Uh, if it leads to sort of the same amount of uh, advantage, probably not very large, but also not entirely empty uh, compared to the main moves, but it makes your opponent just sit there in bewilderment for 15 minutes uh you've you've gained something but but what have you gained apart from 15 minutes that's it right yeah but it's <laughs> i mean it's a time management is part of the game so yeah sure it, it really... and it is it is 90 minutes so it's a slightly shorter classical time control isn't it so yeah uh, and yeah, Betsy, it says, is knight h3 instead of a3 a thing then? Well, I mean, a3 doesn't really commit any kind of a, you know, horrible strategical uh, mistake, which, where, whereas, you know, this change of structure, you're probably won't, not, not going to enjoy all that much. It, it does have to be, uh, you know, a semi-useful move, which doesn't spoil anything. And I understand Misha is joking, but <laughs> I wanted to reply to it seriously, because that's what we do here. Uh, you know, uh, take, take very, very obvious levels and just reply to them as if they're not levels. Um, maybe it slightly discourages c7, c5, because after d takes c5, d4, knight a4, none of those bishop c5, queen a5 checks tactics will ever work because we have mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. But black isn't playing c5 anyway. We're no. stopping something that is not going to happen. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just very confused. <laughs> I, I, I really think he just wants to say this line is not very theory heavy to begin with. And now there is no theory. Let's play the A game of chess. The weakest link, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Okay, so so let's assume Black were to play a normal uh, Carlsbad. So let's say he goes knight f six. Okay. I'm pretty sure we do go bishop g five. Bishop g five, bishop e seven. Uh, let's play old school. E three castles. Bishop d three. Yeah, I think in general he'd be quite happy if this was the outcome as white, Richard. Yeah, that's... I think the yeah. old classical cows, but it's not supposed to equalize. It's not going to be horrible for black, but it also okay. it's not supposed to entirely equalize. Okay. So it's a little bit of a of a concession, and all the people in chat who are kind of, I assume it's a bit of a joke, uh, suggesting h six. I don't think this is a very poor move, honestly. Just no. go h six, knight f six, bishop d six, c six. Do it this way. Yeah, this is. So, well, I... What about? I mean, you know what I want to do after H6. I, I, I want to punish all these flank moves. E4. <laughs> just ah, e4, okay. E4, D, and F3. Can we? Can No, we can't. Well, yeah, we can, but it's going to be ignored. E3 okay. is an issue, isn't I it? Think, I think the most likely outcome is that Black plays E3 and then just develops normally, and you feel slightly, slightly silly. As, as the old, as the old, yeah. green again. Why is it green? Uh, as the old uh, Gufield quote about the Zamish in 
uh, in the King's Indian goes, yeah, ask your Naiji One's opinion on the move of 2F3, please. <laughs> uh, That's a good quote. Probably not a fan. Probably. Okay, so, so, but there is no way to punish these flank moves, ultimately, is there? Excuse me. I mean, this exists, right? Yeah, this exists. This actually exists. So if we're playing h6 here, we're basically saying that we're taking a line which was kind of safe-ish, maybe not the best line in the world, but it was something that I think Magnus played in tournament games. Yeah. And we're adding a3 and a6 to it, and it's green again. It's going to drive me nuts for the rest of the show. Uh, <laughs> and the inclusion of a3 and a6 is really not going to favor white dramatically. It might be... You know, I, I still don't know what the argument is for this being more useful for the white than it is to black, but it definitely doesn't change the position. Like it doesn't suddenly make this winning for white instead of being playable for black. So, yeah, I think H six is a, a, a legitimate reply here. Uh, alternatively, you can maybe play C six and continue waiting. And definitely, we, in the, in that case, we are definitely meeting Bishop four with Bishop D six. So we're kind of we're playing a waiting game here, trying to uh, make white commit to some development. I guess white goes knight of three, but once again, how is this better than white was normally getting here? Bishop g5. You, I can, what about what? Uh, I let know, me I just go knight e7 and. Uh, let that. me try e4 there with the claim that bishop b4 check doesn't exist. Hmm. Yeah. That, no, no, that, after knight of three, but no, 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 no. After knight of three, bishop d6. Hmm. Yeah. That that I can actually buy. Yeah. This 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 maybe is a little bit over optimistic by black. Well, I still don't know. I mean, how bad is it? Yeah, I guess if you have to go D ninety Bishop E seven, it feels a little bit. Yeah, no, we're not. We're not doing that. We if 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 we're doing any yeah, Bishop C four is an issue. Probably something like this. Oh well, now I now do I get mildly excited about the Bishop pair? Mm, or Bishop D three somewhere? Yeah, it's maybe a bit yeah. better for White. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can I can buy that, and uh, then maybe the argument becomes that he is trying to prepare some kind of an early E four if it's allowed. The way not to allow it is to play knight of six, but then we get a pure cow's butt. I will. Okay. Uh, please stop. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it really is. Uh, uh, if I'm if I'm sort of certifiably more more insane at the at the end of this broadcast than I was when when it started. I, I will know what to blame. If, if not who to blame, I will know what to blame. Um, Wait till h6, h3 appears on the board. Mm. Then you you won't even make it to move 10 before the yeah. white jacket gets put on you. Yeah. No, h6, I'm pretty sure, is not met by h3. Maybe it's actually mm. met by the immediate e4, but that doesn't look that threatening. No, this looks... No, 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 no. Uh, that looks okay. This looks like one of my courses, so it can't be particularly good. Um... Talking about one of my courses, mm, absolutely. I've been asked to remind everybody that by all means, talk. <laughs> while we're at a little bit of a weird moment, my most recent uh, series on Chess Marine 4 is out and it's dedicated to the greatest of all time, Judith Polgar, her 10 best games. Not necessarily her 10 best games from if we're measuring things objectively, but 10 games that are certainly relevant uh, to her career. And I will say at least, actually probably at least 80% of the games featured in the series were her own suggestion to be included. Because I asked her and I said, what do you think? She suggested a lot of those games. So if you want to see Judith Polgar and in her element when she was obviously professional and active, check out that series uh, go and go and get it because you will enjoy it and you'll improve your chess and learn a lot about i mean it judith was not just an attacking player but that is what she is famous for uh, her scintillating breathtaking mm. attacks crushing the world's best on a consistent basis go and get it do do consider getting it the yes. carlsbad did not feature You'll yeah, but she, she, I think she played some ones before, but in general, I think like the vast, vast majority of Judith, uh, white games were 1e4s. And as black against 1d4, she. King's Indian, think was a, she? Yeah, she was a King's Indian player. Another dynamic yeah. openings. QGD uh, yeah. did not feature very largely. Not at all. Um, now, 
Um, people in chat saying, oh, well, people are just joining us. Now, is, can somebody confirm to me, is there daylight savings today in America, or am I going nuts? I, I've, in, I, I've seen in, reference to that, yeah. So what does that mean? That What is the actual time in New York right now, for example? That's... I know I could Google it. That's that's really yeah. Like typing typing time in New York now as H six has actually been played by Andrekin, which is very <laughs> very gratifying. Uh, uh, just typing time in New York now. Ten seventeen solves that that issue. Yeah. Hold on, ten seventeen. That's five hours, right? Yeah, they lost an hour. It no, normally it's six hours to New mm. York. Okay, so they lost an hour. The guys. Yeah, somebody, okay. somebody today. I mean, there's there's a number of uh, you know very very old jokes like done over and over again on the whole day daylight savings time. But I I did see it today on Twitter referred to as a uh, uh, happy day when your car time is correct day. Happy day when your what time is correct? When, when your when your car clock time is correct. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's that's quite funny. <laughs> which I thought, which I thought was a novel way of referring to it, but yeah, in general, um, yeah. One of my pet peeves. I'm really glad you said that before we go into the position. Mm. Um, if you don't own a Tesla or anything like that, and you have an old car, and you have to manually adjust the time, mm -hmm. what happens is you get these buttons. You get the one, the, just two buttons. One goes, turns the, uh, one moves the timer up, like an hour up, and one moves the hour down. And sometimes you have to click it across to move the minutes and seconds. But because they're never used, or they're used twice a year tops, they get stuck. They get sticky and stuck. Mm -hmm. and, all, and bloody, you're pushing it, your thumb, by the time you get right the way round, your thumb's falling off. I don't know if you've experienced the same thing, Peter, but I can tell you, I, as a man I, who's got sensitive thumbs, that is a very, no joke. Very important proviso there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> After H three black is in Tsuk Twang, says says a <laughs> many a person in chat. No, I think H six, like apart from being a meme, and uh, you know, potentially slightly. Pushing me in the direction of telling my Karpov slash Halifman story, which I which I probably will in a second because nothing, nothing. Well, I happened. don't know it, so I'm intrigued uh, now. Uh, no, but that th that was basically they uh, they gave uh, uh, an alternate uh, alternate simul ones where mm -hmm. they would make moves uh, uh, after each other. Right. And Halif said that after like a a few rounds going going you know round round the houses making moves he noticed that uh anatoly whenever he would come to a board and there was no obvious like no recapture or an immediate developing move or like a castles or something anatoly would just play h3 because it pretty much is never a bad move and it <laughs> also took all the all the decision making out of the process you just play h3 and you you go to the next board and and then just as a kind of a for science you know as as people do for science uh Halif chose to like he found a board where h3 hasn't been played yet and there was no obvious decision and he played h3 himself and the next time he came to that board a3 was played so he he lost that war as well uh, but yeah so apart from from all of that hila hilarity I mean I use the word hilarity here very advisedly uh it's a the, the idea is of course to play knight f6 and not allow bishop g5 so um h3 is uh, H3 doesn't really make much sense, whereas H6 is a, is a move that has a, a legitimate uh, reason behind it. Uh, Bishop F4 played by by Richard quite quickly. I assume the knight gets developed to F6, and then we and then we see the bishop being developed to D6. I'm still not yeah. entirely sure why the pawn is on A3, but it's not bad. The important also to note that Bishop D6 immediately does run into knight takes d5 which yeah, i think this helpful. works yeah i was trying to figure out if there's some tactics here but i don't think there are it's just a healthy pawn you've blinded. but this actually reminds me if we and you know i'm you know this is all in my notes from 1998 smith and williams and young masters i have to this specific position i've got a very very bad memory if we could go straight to the beginning peter mm -hmm. because i used to be you know i am a, i'm a classically trained player but here knight c3 bishop e7 which is the, the mm -hmm. And now C D five E D five Bishop F four C six mm -hmm. Queen C two. Now Queen C two here. 
Now, the old way was you met Queen C2 with Bishop D6 here mm -hmm. in the good old days. And then, whack, bam, they took on D5 against me. And I was like, what's this? Right, you play Queen A5 check. But at the time, a young schoolboy that I was, I was, what is this move? Um, and the point is Bishop takes F4 is met very handily by Queen E4 check. And that's the uh, the Zwischen Zug, which, but mm -hmm. even this is not so clear because you can go like Knight E7, Knight takes F4, Queen A5 check. And it's still Queen A5 check, King D1, Bishop F5. Mm -hmm. And this is all right. Just... I can't remember who played it against me. But. The, the bigger problem, of course, being that Queen A5 check legitimately wins a piece here, which is not great for white. Does it? I think so, yeah. <laughs> that would be... Knight C3, Bishop F4, Queen E4. Ah, no, that, that still exists. Damn. Yeah, that's why... No, that's why you're supposed to... That's exactly why you're supposed to... Uh, you're actually supposed to take on F4, Queen E4, and then go into this pawn sack line. Mm. Knight E7. Yeah, what was it? Ninety-seven. Ah, then Queen is now Queen A5 check is mate. This is the point. This is ah, yeah, this okay. is mate. Okay, okay, okay. I've learned something today. There so. we go. I mission accomplished. Yeah, King D1, Bishop F5, and now if you go Queen E5, what's going on here? Is this uh, some kind of a okay-ish endgame, I guess. Takes takes ninety-seven. Black is probably fine. Nothing right? else works. This probably works. So. Uh, to a degree. Anyway, this is a bit of a derail because uh, what we have instead of all of this nonsense is uh, this position in which, yeah, as expected, Knight F6 has followed. Yeah. And White played E3. Uh, as I mentioned, Bishop D6 is the expected is the expected move here because you do want to, uh, you know, challenge and basically trade off the knight, the, the Bishop on F4, which, as an end result, I've always felt that these types of positions are nowhere near equal. But there's also been, in fact, I think that game between uh, Sam and Andrakin, Andrakin just quite happily did something along the lines of uh, castles, castles, and just c7, c5, d5, knight c5. And the game didn't even go very long because I think Andrakin feels very, very safe that he will hold some kind of a structure like this. And specifically, Sam in that game did not really. Uh, even uh, you know, look like he is going to, you know, scratch the paint on this setup. I think it went. Uh, it just wasn't uh, wasn't a very uh, a very long or very you know troublesome game for for Dmitri at all. Uh, but in general, of course, uh, the fact that the bishop gets to d three before the black bishop gets to f five is very relevant because this is by far uh, the worst piece uh, black has on the board here. Uh, it doesn't really have any particular comfortable ways of uh, of being developed. The six is a square you can put it on, but it just doesn't really do very much there. And white wants to play something like queen c2, knight g2, I don't know, castle short, and then start pushing for f3 and d4. And uh, yeah, this is just like a pure cow's bot where, uh, yes, you can definitely make an argument that getting the dark square bishops off the board. Okay. How did you do that, board? Like, I didn't... <laughs> I'm just going to ignore it. <laughs> uh, but like I, I made those two clicks within the within you know the 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 the, the span of one second and the changed color midway. I am so very confused. Anyway, uh, science. Uh, no, yes. Let me ask. I, I, can I instruct as I've been yes. mulling this position over? So there are two things I want to ask. Firstly, after Bishop D six. Mm -hmm. Now don't laugh because I know you're going to lie. Look, no. I'm I'm not. A, a cultured chess player. So bishop d6. Now yeah. I'm I, I'm urging to play queen f3 here. Now I know it's a very bad move. I know I understand. Not that bad. No, I think it's. Uh... You might say, well, what is this nonsense move? Well, I'm not saying that. I, yeah, bishop d3, knight g2, and the point is that uh, bishop g4 probably just doesn't work on account of queen g3. Yeah, it doesn't do. I mean, it works, but it doesn't do anything. Yeah. Actually, knight takes d5 might become a threat at some point. Mm, yeah. Um, so against, I mean, is there any value in queen f3? Let's say, so if queen f3 castles, let's say. Yeah. Uh, Bishop I think what happens say. here is by removing the queen from uh, from uh, the control over the d file, you make yeah. it, I think, maybe ever so slightly more attractive for black. If it okay, works, c5, knight g2. For like, for, to, to go for the... Uh, yes. Immediate counterplay along in the center like this. Once again, I'm I'm 
very deliberately not even trying to calculate night takes d5 if it yeah works, I, it works. I don't think it does work but like i'm just yeah. ignoring it i'm i'm showing structures and showing uh typical plans uh this doesn't look horrible because you have kind of misplaced the queen a little yeah. bit yeah you, you you're not really giving mate on the king side either so I, no. I don't know why you're so in love with developing i'm not I, i'm not i'm just in love with the with the move in i've got an issue mm. i i i've got a fetish for queen f3 it's probably something to do with the series that I'm producing at the moment, which will, details will be revealed, and it does pop up a lot, this move. Yeah, the first the first step towards uh, towards recovery is actually accepting you have the issue, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, here's uh, my second question. Yes. So after e3, bishop f5, trying to be uber kind of... Uh, I'm taking a vote. I think, now, I think that this is maybe why... Yeah, have... but hold on a second here. Hold on a second here. Can I play knight c6 or what is? This? Yeah, this is why the pawn is on a3 once again because after queen takes b7, you no longer have knight b4, right? And I have but to... I have knight a5. Yes, you do. I oh, know. I take I lose c7. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm blundering yeah. everything. And, okay. and and this and this legitimately, if we're looking for a way to justify a3 tactically, it probably is specifically uh, the lines where we have to play queen b3 and we no longer have to worry about this uh, this counterplay. Um, but against queen b3, black does have another move, which is this kooky little rook a7 move. Yeah, there is rook a7. There's also they actually sometimes play b5 in these types of positions. It looks extremely ugly, but they there are definitely some spots in which people have been have been making this unbelievably, unbelievably ugly move and making. How it can one play this move in, with a clear conscience? I think, like, yeah. I think I would get you know the, the the usual you know sort of stupid remark about these things is that you, like you, you you would get instantly expelled from the pioneer's house if you ever did that exactly but uh, I think these days the understanding that tempi actually also matter and in particular but here like it just doesn't work right rook c one or something yeah it looks horrible it's it's not in this position but in general if black right. can get knight six knight a five knight c four or perhaps knight d seven knight b six knight c four and just get this knight to this very very nice square in particular with the pawn on a3 meaning that uh organizing b2 b3 gets a lot harder in the future uh these positions become less instantly resignable <laughs> let's put it like this but yeah, yeah. Ob obviously not here here is just not going to be great i think this you you kind of have to play rook a7 but you're also not altogether happy about having to play rook right. Uh, I guess I start with rook c1 or maybe knight e2 g3, but I, I kind of like rook c1 here. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's just unnecessary more than yeah, anything. Yeah, I agree. And just to, uh, since I referenced it earlier, just to show uh, the viewers what happened in that game against Sam, uh, that game went, because it, it will be similar-ish, or, or not anymore, okay, now, now it won't be. But that game went bishop g5, bishop e6, uh, e3, knight bd7, bishop d3, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, h6, bishop h4, bishop d6, bishop g3, and uh, Dmitry just very, very happily just took on g3 here and, and played, played and played castles knight e2 uh, and and c7, c5, and uh, I remember we got like we we were watching something else that day. There were some games that were sort of more important in terms of the group standing, so we were we did not come to this game very early, and uh, yeah, we looked at. We looked at this position, I think, and we thought, you know, this looks absolutely fantastic for white. There is a full control over the d4 square. Having played hg3 in general is considered to be very good for white because you can occasionally start developing some kind of initiative on the king side. Uh, but, but you know, in actual fact, the game lasted 24 moves. Uh, and Andrekin was entirely, entirely un unbothered by, by anything for, for the rest of it. Uh, so he clearly does not mind uh, these types of structures and today uh, his reply to uh, Richard wasting a tempo on a3 is actually quite logical uh, uh, structurally he says uh, h6 is much less of a wasted tempo than a3 because as we mentioned stopping bishop g5 is uh, is useful and now I will just start counterplay uh, against your center uh just c5 knight c6 I, i'm guessing knight f3 knight c6 and white needs to find a move because if you take on c5 uh this is an excellent excellent version of a position which arises from a number of openings like mm -hmm. these types of positions are kind of well known but black has everything exactly where it should be the bishop already mm -hmm. has the a7 square provided mm -hmm. for by playing a6 earlier 
h6 is going to be very useful in stopping both bishop g5 and knight g5 if we have to put the bishop on a6. g5, g4 is going to be a very, very easy source of counterplay. And black is also, I think, arguably a couple of tempi up to compare to uh, some of the QGD positions which uh, get to somewhere like this, in particular because we've taken on c5 in one tempo. Because normally black has to play bishop 7 and then take on c5, wasting mm -hmm. a full tempo in the process. I'm pretty sure d take c5 is not a move uh, Richard will consider for more than three seconds, though. Like, you play something like rook c1 here. Uh, Magnus, in recent times, I think has been very much sort of on the record as someone who believes that this structure is not as equal as it might look. Hmm. But once again, how unhappy are you going to be here with black? Precisely. It's, it's just and not it's, very much. It's just... No, how can you be unhappy? Yeah, you might you might be ever so slightly worse because the bishop on c8 is maybe ever so slightly worse than the bishop on e2, e2 on d or d3. But it's a symmetrical position with no weaknesses. Um, why don't they just draw and go to tiebreak? I don't think this is what, what Ricci uh, means to do today. Uh, yeah. He did play a kind of a quirky novelty on move 5. Well, I mean, I'm not sure it's a technically a novelty. Let me actually look this up. I wonder, I wonder if this has ever been uh, played before. What, which one? A3, you mean? Yeah, the move A3, yeah. Yeah, have a look. A3 uh, has one game in the Chess24 database on site. Wow. So unbelievably new. Uh, and it's not a very uh, high rated game either. The player on the white side of it who did play a three in this position is rated nineteen seventy eight. Uh, so not a very high profile. Yeah, you were born, weren't it? Not exactly, yeah, but close. I'm slightly older than that, sadly. Um, um yeah. So we can call. Do you call it now? This is where you're. At, you, you might get a bit of heat. Mm -hmm. Do you call A3 a novelty then if the only game on the database is played by somebody sure, rated? Yeah, I think, I think it does count as a novelty. It can. So where, where is the cutoff as, in terms of novelty? Like if I were to play A3 here, is it a novelty then? Uh, because I'm... I mean, the temptation, <laughs> the temptation obviously is to say, of course, Lawrence, yeah, but, but probably not, no. <clears throat> like, do you have to be a, a titled player, a move played in a in a in a classical I think, game. I think sort of the larger point there is that sorry about that. Hang on a second. Yeah. The larger point is that um I'm not sure you even check the database very much. It's like it's it's one of those situations where the move is so rare and I think once you start looking at it you kind of know it is ex exceedingly rare that you might not even Kind of consult the database because you just come to the conclusion that this is interesting and you want to analyze it and yes by a strict definition of the word this is not a novelty because we have the game on the record but uh so it's a novelty in his heart you know he's he's definitely doing something new today and whether it is uh strictly speaking new uh new or not is i don't think very important to uh to richard yeah this is uh yeah, this this is a novelty. I mean, I, I the way I classify is if you're not really sort of, I am twenty four hundred ish. It, it it feels like it should be classified as a, as a novelty. Mm. And by the way, I, I I the more you talk about C five, the more I actually really quite dig it. I, for all the reasons you said, because I don't see a way for white to take advantage of um of this immediate move. Yeah, I mean, can you be? Can we be creative in any as? I mean, do we have the right to be creative here? I guess we don't even have the right. Well, I mean, define creative. We can definitely, uh, you know, do some do some not boilerplate stuff. But okay, you still, you still need to develop pieces. Like you, you're pre one big decision here that you need to ask yourself is: Do you believe there are positions in which knight needs to be on e two? Yeah, so, um, okay, don't, okay. Let, how can we, so there are two moves that come to mind here, for creative, like uber creativity, mm -hmm. which probably won't be played. One is to play the move e4, don't laugh, that, that, that is on my, and one is to play the move bishop e5, okay? Now, I know you're going to laugh at both. No, 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 e4, I mean, not e4 laugh. Is 
I mean, I, I kind of know it doesn't work specifically because yeah. four exists. Uh, but no, no. I mean, there is. Ah, uh, yeah, because we don't have bishop b five, right? Yeah, so we, the, right, we absolutely right. need to have the move bishop b five yeah. in this position to yeah. be able to continue, and it's unavailable because Black played the the all important, very very strong a seven a six on move three. Uh, so yeah, e four. It's I understand where you're coming from. It yeah. just doesn't work. Uh, whereas bishop b five, you do need to consider. But once again. Actually, what I was going to say here, I'm less convinced of. I was going to say that maybe we can just give it up. Yeah, and... we just take and take, exactly. And then we take... Yeah, DC, yeah. And Bishop... Maybe yeah, even bishop. include Rook C1 here. Rook C1, Bishop... Rook C7, and then we go Knight F3, Castles, Bishop C4. Bishop B2. Or Bishop B2. Or Bishop C4, yeah. Um, bishop B2 is also fine. This bishop does B2 not look... Fine. This does not look like it works for Black. No. So bishop e5 definitely becomes a, a, a much more serious topic. Although, maybe we can do something like this, right? Yeah, queen b3. Ah, oh, you wanted to actually go in on the on the concept. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we are. Well, I mean, we he, are... here the move b7, b5 looks very far from ugly. Really? I think so, yeah. Okay, I guess I have to go dc here, right? You see, you kind of lose material, right? Oh, I lose straight up? Oh, God. That's Excuse one me. of the reasons why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I'm just losing. I'm yeah. just blundering pieces. B5, huh? Simple as that. Easy game. Yeah. Okay. So I can't go queen b3. Okay. So back to. Well, you course. can, but you will. You will have to justify it. I mean, the no. I mean, like, is that here? I think you once again. It just doesn't I'm, doesn't work for for white in any kind of a yeah a sensible yeah no uh, meaning of the word. So I think bishop b6 probably covers it well enough. Okay, with... and what if I play knight... Uh... What if I go knight e2 here? Is this ridiculous? This is rude. And if you go knight c6 and I just ignore it and go knight f4 and just try and play as... No, that, that that once again... But I mean, this is of course obscene. But I, the point is, it's I'm trying... Because if knight f3 and just playing standard yields nothing, then then I have to try and find something... This I actually kind of like, yeah. This this particular idea I actually kind of like. So bishop five. Let me see if we're, maybe we're missing something. I mean, it's a ridiculous move. No. Uh, if if black has a weakness here, it obviously is the the pawn on d five. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to target. And black is also somewhat underdeveloped. Um. Uh. So yeah, no, it's it's not ridiculous. I was. It's just that, like I I feel kind of bad because I was seriously half expecting after your first suggestion of a creative move in this position was it three e four. I was really very, very prepared for the second one to be G2, G4. Oh, goodness. No, I mean, I, I, instead, I, it's only 3.30. Instead, you're actually suggesting something which is sensible, which I which I choose to treat as a betrayal. But, um, yeah, there should be five. Let's... Imagine it lands. That would be... But Richard is the sort of guy who could play Bishop B5. He's very... I mean, he's, it's in his wheelhouse. Uh... Absolutely. Can we, can we maybe go on like BD7? But but the point is that it's not potentially even threatening. a threat, is it? Yeah, yeah we're not. So, but but maybe here I would. Can I go knight f three here? I also I also want to suggest that actually bishop g three is not stupid here <laughs> <laughs> because knight b seven I can very right. I, I, can, I can make a legitimate argument for this being. Yeah, and this is where black plays knight b8 and says, yeah, yeah. And, and they go knight b8, and this is a draw in 10 moves with this repetition. This would be this would be the absolute, like, I, I am so here for it. Like, if this is how they make a three, yeah, this is fantastic. Like, I'm, I'm so here for it. My, my body is ready for... Uh, <laughs> my body is ready. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, knight b7, I think the point is largely that after knight of 3 we still don't really have a smart move yeah right? and cd bishop d4 we're happy as larry mm -hmm. yes yeah, yeah and exactly bishop d4 and we're really happy here right what as about well. g4 after knight bg7 says better than magnus yeah yeah that actually is, yeah no, not as not as ridiculous as it looks probably, no but it probably not the best move in the position <laughs> not as ridiculous as it no looks. but it's like we can take take and take right yeah, we can even start with this honestly Oh yeah, we can start with. We're gonna start with. No, we're, we're oh. not gonna. We're not gonna get this. Yeah, that's probably a you know a good enough reason not to do it. Um, but yeah, bishop b five. You know, the more I think of it, the the more I feel that maybe we are supposed to take this seriously. It's not not a bad move at all. 
Black has a number of ways of like quote unquote ignoring it. Like bishop e seven is one. Yeah, but so bishop e so let's try bishop e. So bishop e seven. Can I take on c five? Yeah, my point was that I mean ignoring it is not a fair description of what I what, what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to sacrifice something to develop okay. very quickly. So I. So, mm, yeah, I don't like bishop f6, knight f6, b4. That, that doesn't feel right. Yeah, that looks that shockingly, <clears throat> shockingly to my eyes. I don't think it loses, but it looks extremely greedy, and I wouldn't want to play like this. Like, no, just, it feels my, wrong. My, my tender sensibilities are offended by such, you know, naked show of greed, but it's shockingly not that bad because. We already have the entire <clears throat> we already have the entire pawn chain sort of protecting itself, and we are kind of two moves away from consolidating. Um, yeah, it's an interesting option, and uh, also you have to know that Richie played a three more or less instantaneously, and he should have been expecting this opening. Uh, as we've noted, as we were covering well, well when we were covering the Giri Andrekin semifinal. Dmitry appears to be very committed to playing uh, sort of the openings he brought for this tournament and uh, not really worried about even, you know, a theoretician as prominent as Anish. Uh, Dmitry still decided not to dodge the same opening that he played against him in the classical and allowed him to prepare and allowed him like a reasonably large target to, to aim for. So I think Richard was supposed to expect uh, this particular QGD uh, again. So he played a three, uh, h6 really, I mean, we kind of settled on h6 being one of the maybe three or maybe even two main candidates here within the first two minutes. So you are supposed to prepare something against it. He played bishop f4, knight f6, e3. And it's interesting that c5 apparently came as a bit of a surprise because he has been thinking for sort of long enough here to... Uh, maybe he just thought bishop d6 was just going to come you know because yeah that normally specifically because of the uh the structures that uh dmitry has been uh aiming for i think he had a reasonable expectation of bishop d6 being very much of what will be played sort of by autopilot but exactly yeah c5 if you if you're not playing bishop d6 here you probably are playing c5 those are the two options which are like in terms of structures and types of positions that black can get, this is one and this is basically the other and there is nothing, nothing else. I don't think uh, you can ever expect black to just like tamely go for a position like this, which just is very unpleasant. I don't think it's very good at all for, for black here. So I don't think you expect this. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm curious what he settles on. Uh, let's go back to like okay. normal moves for a second. So if you do play knight of three, okay. you play mm -hmm. knight c six. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, you are not obliged to take on c five. You can make mm -hmm. some kind of a waiting move, which is bishop b two, bishop d three, rook c one. I guess is are are your options. Um, maybe bishop d three. But are we not running into bishop g fours here? I think we can reasonably safely ignore it. Okay. Because I don't think Black has developed enough to ever actually consider taking on d4. Right. I think yeah. that, that backfires really, really horribly if you do that. Yeah, some knight e5 at the end. Right? Yeah, it's not going to be like if you if you take if you take like like so you get uh, you get this, and if you if you take on f3 first, this is like a pet. There, there, yeah, this some... reminds me of that Petrov line, right? Yeah, but yeah. you're you're like five tempi behind here. I think you kind of lost here, pretty much. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure you just don't survive this after something like Queen G3. Even Look, yeah, even it just, it just looks like you're not going to survive this. It's just it's way just any move too dangerous. Yeah, way too dangerous for you to uh, to be doing this. I think what Black actually ends up doing is either Bishop seven or perhaps steal this idea. Mm -hmm. Of just getting these bishops off the board and uh i mean it's just so little yes maybe you're a little bit better but it's just so so very little i don't know bishop e6 or bishop d, like you know bishop d7 rook fe8 and 
yeah, you can't be, you can't be. The way, the way, the way, White, <clears throat> the way White stands better in this types of structures is that you somehow, and he played Bishop five. We are very happy about this. <clears throat> Did he? Yes. yes. Uh, we got him. Yeah. So the way, the, just to finish with this extremely boring structure before we actually discuss the fun. Uh, if you play rookie one and black goes, I don't know, some kind of a completely inconsequential thing and you play knight e5 and then you play queen d2, rook e3, rook a1, this is how you become worse. But obviously, uh, black will put something on the e8 square immediately and the knight basically never lands on e5 here. So, yeah, black is just fine. But yeah, bishop e5, I am, I am very, very happy about this because this could become very sharp and very non-standard. In, in no time flat. So bishop e6 does seem like the most obvious move. We were playing knight e2 here, right? Knight c6, knight of... Yeah, knight e2. Well, yeah, that's what I was saying. Knight c6. Knight can, I take on, can I take on d4 here? Okay. Uh, I'm Klein moment, bitte. Uh, there's a lot already to... There's a lot of stuff. This is... This is stuff already. There's like four moves here that are candidates. I mean, okay. Okay, let's just go bishop d4. Let, let's be let's be boring. I mean ED is 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 on the is on the no, Yeah, ED is, is not is not I, I, my, my point was this is probably not <clears throat> not that horrible for black, some kind of position like this. You really yeah, I think this is playable. I think this is not like you. You want more. I think if you play bishop five, I think you want more than this. One more. Okay, is my point uh, because the pawn d five is going to be difficult to actually pick up. You still have to spend some time on developing, and Black will, I think, have enough uh, enough count to play here in most cases. Like if you if you finish development by both sides and uh, you you get to play on rook f d one and bishop f three, maybe you're better, but. Black should be able to um, do things about that. Like bishop c5, d4 is now a source of counter play after rook fd1. Maybe we can go. But kind of a, even maybe even a larger point is that Andrekin has shown that he is not really all that unhappy about having to play a position like this. So you want to maybe not allow it. So what do we think about this? Yeah, I didn't buy this though somehow. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't sit well. Like just bishop d six. Hmm. Just bishop d six. I mean, our pieces are. Yeah. Pieces. Yeah, that is a good point. Yeah. I've had positions like this against nine-year-old Indian kids for the past mm. couple of years. So, no, no, no. what do we do here with white? Then I guess we actually do this. Yeah, because we don't yeah. really have as much choice as I originally anticipated. Yeah. So what did you want to do? Bishop d6 here, right? No, I think I took first <clears throat> and then played. Oh, you took first. Yeah. So takes, takes, and bishop d6. <clears throat> and oh. your claim is that I've got no way to... No. Hang on a second. Uh, just to address something from chat. Yeah. Better Sorry. than Magnus says, what, what happens if we do this? Uh, bishop d6 and f4. I think this is, the, you know, this way madness lies kind of thing. I think you are underdeveloped to, to try this. And I think white is probably already having to think about equality because that center is going to disintegrate very it's very like easy. one of those Frenches with f4 yeah, where you get yeah, caught just, behind if you like if, if black makes some kind of a waiting move and we get to castle and we still don't lose any material to queen b6 somewhere then we're doing okay but after bishop d3 nobody will play rook c8 i think what what, what actually does end up happening is something yeah. like and then you're stuck with this king on e1 and you might just be straight up lost so you have to take with the d pawn but even here the same 94 exists and there are other moves as well like even 97 followed by queen b6 check might be a tactical issue that you don't have a good solution for uh so i think this is uh <clears throat> strategically maybe not that horrible but just is not going to work out because of how far behind in development you are um how long until the most obvious move bishop e6 somebody asked in chat um we don't know uh queen b3 here is a question from uh, Flinsky. I think we had this, right? I played b5 and we didn't know what the follow-up was. Because well, I blundered the piece. Yeah, so dc5, d4 is not great. 
<laughs> uh, Bishop f6 and knight d5 is also very much not great because you have to play e3, e4 here. And I assume you're worse against like any, any sensible move, c4, even knight c6, you're just not doing well here with white. <clears throat> so uh, queen b3 is a kind of a wasted, wasted tempo. You can play knight f3 here, but first of all, knight c6 exists. And also, you do have to consider that you've given black, I mean, queen d1 is probably wrong, but let's say even this. Uh, you've given black this absolutely gorgeous pawn chain. Yeah. Uh, and we're still not really pushing for a 3, 4, which is like the normal counterplay for white in these types of structures is to push for the very, very quick e 3, 4. But you still have these, you know, things stuck on the starting squares. So what will end up happening is uh, both both sides will finish development. And uh, if white doesn't have any breaks in the center here, I think black is just potentially better already because of how uh, important the space gain on the queen side is. <clears throat> yeah, okay, very, uh, very. I've got a suggestion, but I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not in love with it after bishop e6. What if we go, instead of knight e2, if we go bishop e2? I know I'm being super creative, but I'm an artist. Let me be. I'm bishop f3. But I think the issue remains the same, right? I'll just take on d4 here and uh, your artistry. Bishop <laughs> Goes bishop d4, you want to take queen d4, bishop d6, or rook c8. Yeah, yeah rook c8. I, I, I wanted to see, I wanted to claim that maybe this was a slightly better version. Queen d. I don't know. I don't know if it is. It might be. It might be. It's not like it's not so unreasonable because the bishop kind of needs to be an f3. Yeah. So it looks slow, but the resulting position makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, if I can castle and play rook d1, I might have a smidgen of uh, pressure on d5 here, and you might have to prove something here as black. Sure, I'm probably, I'm pretending to have something. We understand it's a bluff, but... You know, sometimes, even when you know it's a bluff, you can't call. Mm. <laughs> For all of you no. poker players, you know the guy is bluffing, but you're getting such a terrible price that... In the worst case scenario, you give all your chips on that one occasion where he was kind of only it was he was bluffing with the best hand sometimes. That's how bad. So queen d3, how bad? I would take white. I obviously, you know, very famously, I know nothing of anything that that you're currently speaking of. I have not read a single poker book or know any rules of poker. Or... I'm talking more about the, the the people at home. Just we we need to, you know, we need to maintain continuity on this show. And uh, on this show, I basically don't know what that game is, don't know any of the lingo, uh, have no idea how to play any of the variants. Uh, very That's important. Very game. important to maintain that picture because otherwise, it's a very silly game. It's a yeah. very silly game. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, that's 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 where we are. Uh, uh, Bishop e five. I'm glad he's played it. Although I do have a sneaking suspicion it's not going to work out. Yeah. Engine check uh, by uh, Flinsky says queen b three b five knight g two. I still don't. Yeah, that makes maybe some more sense because we. What's uh, the idea? We just, oh, we just want to go knight f4. We've right? included queen b3 and b5. And uh, somehow this is a better version, I guess. Or maybe, ah, no, no, I think the point is we can take on f6 now. And maybe we can support it by... Knight ef4. Although I still don't... I don't, I don't knight e6. Uh, f6 e is still winning, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I still don't quite understand why this doesn't lose material, but maybe it doesn't. It's kind of a Maybe you go bishop c4 here like a champ. And uh, queen c4, something or queen c4, oh, or whatever, or... just go queen c4, queen c4, queen c4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just take on his, yeah, okay, rook c1. Yeah, I can, I can believe that is playable for white, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it, it does feel like <clears throat> actually know. a6 was hanging there as well, right? Queen a6 might, might, might exist, mm. queen a6 might just exist there, by the way. Yeah, sure. I just didn't like it didn't feel important enough to give a couple of... <laughs> maybe you're right maybe it is like black's counterplay is slow enough that picking up uh, a fourth pawn for the piece here is a very valid concern i just had four <clears> pawns <throat> for a piece in a recent game you know the game i i had played bundesliga what on the saturday i had four pawns for a night mm. wasn't quite enough believe it or not wasn't quite enough hard hard to win 
four pawns sometimes not enough. You would think mm -hmm. it's enough. Okay. In most so, cases will be, yeah, but there are different cases. Cases. There are occasions. Where it's um, I don't think we get bishop b6, queen b3, b5, knight g2. Personally, I think very unlikely we get that. Yeah, the big question currently is do we even get bishop b6? Because uh, Dmitry hasn't played it yet and it does seem like. I think we do. Yeah, I think I think he just realizes that knight bg7 like would have been a playable move if it actually created the threat of knight takes e5. But right. uh, once once he kind of very very naturally spots that he still has to look for a move now, and White can just very very safely develop behind this bishop on e5. Like if you play bishop e7, we can just continue developing and claiming that knight bg7 is such a horrible move that. Black never really gets to resolve the situation in the center to their advantage at all. Uh, because, yeah, cd4, bishop d4 obviously is a very, very happy position for what Bishop d7 played. Now that pro you know, Excuse me? No, uh, thank you. That was the board. That was the board once again. Yeah. Um, uh, the board once again uh, registering a, a square that was touched upon along yeah, yeah. the way. Yeah, very, very interesting spot for Richard now because uh, there are ways here to get a very dry, I mean, decent, but very dry, not very inspiring position. Uh, and there are also ways to create absolute mayhem. And it is incumbent upon him to, to choose which. Um, I feel like you know, it's a conversation we could we could be having, but I feel like neither of us knows Richard enough to to give a confident no. reply to the question. And the question, I mean, you, you say no, but you haven't heard the question yet. All oh, right, what's the question? Uh, and 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 the question is, uh, does he? I'm trying to formulate it in a in a in a proper way here. Uh, has he actually, let's say, sat down with a piece of paper? and tried to figure out what his odds are on 17 points and whether oh. he absolutely has to push to win. Like, obviously, winning the final qualifies him and 17 points isn't quite enough. But let's say, uh, like, is he the kind of a person who actually tries to work out how bad it is if he doesn't win the final? Uh, and if, let's say, the answer is he still qualifies, I don't know, 72% of the time if he doesn't win the final, uh, he can just take much bigger risks today in order, uh, to, in order to just put it to bed and not even play the rapids tomorrow let's put it this way i've got an answer richard Ein owns neither pen nor paper so <laughs> uh and yeah chess we chess we was asking do you think richie's play is high risk not yet but uh the reason i'm asking here is specifically because you know, uh, the range of his options here is basically this, which I think is very, very close to equality and also is, I think, quite boring and uh, makes Black's life quite simple. Black maybe doesn't fully equalize in all of these positions. Maybe you're ever so slightly better with white. But Andrekin will know what to do, and you're also not going to get very much. You're going to get some kind of a stable but small advantage such as, for instance, like the, the most straightforward way is just to take on a four and play queen b6, as I've pointed out, and then rook fd8, and we chill as black, and it's just very, very difficult to win this position with white. Or you can play, as has been also pointed out by Chad, we play something like queen b3, b5, you go knight g2 here, uh, and uh, yeah, somewhere around here, you you might have to start sacrificing pieces. Like our current our current estimation of what the most testing approach here is for white is maybe actually that kind of mad line with bishop f6 knight d5 and knight e4 which immediately forces white to give up a full bishop on c4 um yeah and probably queen takes e4 not queen b7 uh so <clears throat> uh those are two very very different approaches after after bishop 6 is on the board as we've expected uh there's a way here to keep everything pretty much under control for white, but you win. I will assign some kind of a percentage to how many how many positions you will, how many times you win here. And it's going to be, I don't know, like 15%. Uh, 
and you lose like 0% and 85% of these games are drawn. Maybe 15 is low, but this is the point I'm trying to make. Or you can play something like this and you definitely lose now, I don't know, 20% of the games and you win, I don't know, 35 and there is whatever is left is a, is a draw. Uh, so like, does he approach these things instinctively? And also how, like this particular iteration of Richard, the, the, the one that plays normal openings with black, the one that actually kind of conserves energy and, you know, goes for boring save draws with the black pieces as we, as we have seen yesterday, this particular, you know, remake of Richard Rapport, the, the absolute wild genius from Hungary, does he just kind of go semi all in here or does he not? I don't know, is the honest answer. I, I, I really don't know. But the next move is going to show his hand because he either does play the queen b3, knight e2 stuff and we've got a wild knight or he plays a bit more measured. I've got a feeling he's going to go for the measured approach and realize that it was an interesting experiment, but whatever, it's not really working out. Yeah, and uh, very importantly, uh, yeah, I was also kind of looking for, for Chad to educate me on this because I, I had a feeling my math is just straight up wrong. Uh, Elite Triple uh, immediately replied to my original question by saying someone has done that with ELO rating to calculate qualifying odds. He's basically a 94% in if he wins the finals and only 25% yeah. in if he loses. So coming second here actually makes him sort of, you know, I mean, obviously 25% out of this field, it's, it's against the entire field. It's not a dog. He will still be in very good spot, but uh, it, it, it uh, lowers his odds dramatically. Yeah. Very, very dramatically. But also that's a very useful answer. And thank you for that to the triple, but that kind of requires a follow-up a follow-up question and answer and we kind of have this the, the the answer here in that he's played 9g2 without queen b3 is knowing that he really really needs to win this final what do you do with that information do you go all in or do you think that your odds are actually improved by playing a full day of shorter time controls tomorrow and uh there's also uh an opinion in chat uh Nathaniel uh, Nathaniel says Rapport is a much better and rapid, a uh, much better rapid player than Andrekin. I wouldn't be as safe uh, in that assumption. Uh, I mean, he is a very very strong rapid player. He's a very good blitz player. I've played against him uh, a bit last year. He's a scary proposition. But I think people tend to slightly underrate Andrekin as a as a player in general and also as a rapid and blitz player in particular. I think. I think it will be very, very close if it goes to tomorrow. Yeah, I agree. So what were we saying after knight e2, that after knight c6? Well, we go knight c6 and cd4. I think, <clears throat> I think the restrained option here is quite, is quite decent because uh, compared, to, uh, compared to the position with queen b3 and b5 on the board, you, you no longer really have this option at all. It just doesn't yeah. make any sense if you cannot immediately take on d5. dc5, bishop c5 is kind of horrible, d5, d4 is going to come and kind of sweep everything away. Uh, playing queen b3 here allows many, many things, including among them, actually long castles, I think, mm -hmm. seems completely fine to me. And once again, it's very unclear what you are doing with uh, with your development here as white. So this is not an option. Uh, queen b3 at the very least allows knight a5, but there might be stronger things as well. <clears throat> you, uh, you are running, I think, significant risks as you play. Like, you have to start calculating this stuff and you might not like what you, you know, the conclusions you come to once you start calculating it. So yeah. it feels like after knight six, you're pretty much locked in into playing knight f4. Uh, Black probably should take on d4 here, allowing bishop f6 and knight cd5 is, I don't know why you would do that, even though you could still try to calculate something like, I don't know which- Queen e5 point. at the end looks far <clears throat> Take Take queen e5? Ah, there's some. There's a pawn on d4. What are you talking about? No, no. No, no I meant, I meant uh, why this threatening uh, takes takes and 95. So oh, I right. Think... Yes. Sorry. Yeah. My point was, c takes d4 is kind of semi forced because I don't really like anything else. I don't like allowing my takes c6 and then bishop g3, for instance. Right. Uh, so you do play c takes d4. Yeah. The, the position you were talking about. Yes. Here, 
you absolutely cannot do this with white. You're once again probably much worse with long castles coming here and the king stuck on e1. So if c takes d4 happens, you absolutely do take with the bishop. Mm -hmm. And we get the position that I was describing, which is, as I mentioned, like it's not white probably is ever so slightly better. Let's actually check what the uh, what the engine says. Yeah, it gives white a kind of a smallish advantage. You can go bishop 2 as I mentioned, or you yeah. can go or you can go for some position like this. Ah, oh, you can also, oh, yeah. <clears throat> which is also not stupid, but this is basically like a classic Tarash type structure. You get those from classical Tarashes and like rook a d8, the bishop goes to c5 and a7. And uh, yes, because of the safer king and the kind of a spoiled structure in the center there, <clears throat> white has uh, a bit of a pull in these types of positions, but it's uh, <clears throat> it's not dramatic. Yeah, Karpov Kasparov asks, uh, says Harley 606. Absolutely, yeah, you would get uh, you would get these structures from <clears throat> just to briefly illustrate. Uh, if you look at the classical Tarash lines, which is basically now it completely disappeared. You no longer see those because the dub of Tarash completely replaced it. But like the old, the old really really uh, sort of proper classical Tarash, which started from somewhere around here. And black would occasionally play bishop e6 in these positions, perhaps provoking h3 first, and you would get this structure. And if this bishop is traded for this knight, <clears throat> yes, white is a bit better, but it's not it's not horrible. The, the, this position probably is quite horrible for black, but it is horrible because uh, the bishop will survive, the bishop will stay on the board, and the bishop pair is quite dangerous. Uh, but if you if you imagine white having to take on f6 here somehow, it's not that bad. Precisely. Knight uh, c6 on the board. In the meantime, yeah, uh, knight 6 played. What is the Dub of Tarash? The Dub of Tarash is <clears throat> uh, okay, just round up. Yeah, it's uh, after bishop g2 now, pretty much everybody goes cd4, knight d4, bishop c5. And uh, I'm sure it existed before Daniel Dubov started analyzing it, but he is sort of far and away the main person who started popularizing this move order. And I think everybody by this point calls it the Dub of Tarash. And uh, as I understand it, it is currently supposed to be completely fine. Uh, nobody, despite him playing it basically every single game with black, where, where people did not dodge it on the white side of it, I think nobody was able to really uh, even touch the surface. Um, neither four played. Yes, it takes d4 is really really the move you're supposed to make here and the engine agrees i will switch it off but the engine does agree that you have to take on uh d4 here and then after bishop takes d4 uh knight takes is not the only move but it is the most logical move you can postpone it for a move or two i guess by playing bishop 7 and just you know finishing development first but eventually i think you will have to take and we will have some kind of a position that is similar to what we've been discussing for the last half an hour Yep, and CD4 is actually already on the board, so uh, <clears throat> your, uh, your spot on Bishop D4 m will be played, and uh, uh, only uh, only twenty three uh, twenty three hundred says there was an interesting line uh, starting with uh, G3, Knight C6, Bishop G3? G3, Knight E4, which already yeah. is very very. Uh, non forced so knight e2 knight c3 b takes c3 f6 bishop f4 g5 castles uh which does look uh which does look very interesting for white honestly i would be in, like in the blitz game i'm playing this with white in a hard bit in the classical game less I'm, I'm less certain but i would still be very interested i think the point is rather that there is a number of very very non forced decisions along the way i don't think this entire line is is actually in any way forced at all. I think there's a number of options uh, both sides can take uh, in the meantime, which are different from what I've just shown you. But yeah, that's a, that's an interesting option. And we completely disregarded G3. Uh, I didn't even see G3 as an option. Yeah, yeah. and it, it actually makes a ton of sense since we are playing against the D5 pawn here, putting the bishop on this, on this diagonal as early as possible. Absolutely does make sense. So yeah, well, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for that. Uh, only twenty three hundred, but it's sort of in the past now. This is what we have. Uh, it's probably less fun. It definitely is less fun than this. <laughs> like I would very much like to watch them uh, play this position. It's uh, 
Uh, it's a very, very unbalanced, very interesting uh, piece of sacrifice. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the more I look at it, the more I think, yeah, just on purely kind of aesthetic grounds, I would much mm -hmm. rather play this with white. It's just so much more fun to play this with white. But instead, we have this position. Yeah, we do. And uh, maybe this is another good moment to uh, get you guys to uh, actually, you know, sign up. I mean, after all, uh, mouths don't feed themselves. Uh, please support the company and the stream by becoming a premium member. But it's not all bad news because you get 40% off practically free. I mean, it would be free if it was 100% off, but it's practically free with 40% off. Use the code Grand Prix 2022. Go to chess24.com slash premium. Become a premium member and, you know, just enjoy all the benefits. And there are numerous. I won't go through them all because it would take me weeks and we would just miss the game if I were to do such a thing. Uh, and um, remember some new things out. We've got not just my series on Judith Polgar's best games, but a very, very fascinating series, which I've not yet had a chance to properly look at. Inside Team Magnus. Uh, get yourselves over to this, uh, The Road to Dubai. Uh, it's a, a sit-down chat with Jan Gustafsson, Lauren Fresine, and Peter Heine Nielsen, the backbone of Team Magnus, discussing exactly what went down in Dubai. Um, very interesting to hear the thoughts and the insight of three of the key members, three of the more senior members of that team. And... Uh, yeah, as I say, I haven't had a chance to look at it myself yet, but I am interested in hearing what these wonderful humans all have to say. I mean, they're all not wonderful humans. What I mean is... <laughs> why would you... Why? What? Why? How? They're wonderful. I'm only joking. I love them all. I love them all, especially the French dude. Um, he's the best. He is the great Laurent, if you're watching, I don't know, he's probably, is he commentating? Is there a French stream on this today? I guess there very, is. Very, very possibly, but we, uh, well, I can't confirm nor deny, but. Laurent, if you're watching, I miss you. And uh, please uh, don't ghost me like Jan did for nearly a full year. Yeah, you, you, you've done some creative accounting not to pay out the, not to pay out that that bet you did on Twitter, right? No, no, no. That that's the one where I nearly got scammed. No, no, but I, I think a, a number of people gave what I think was the correct answer. But then you. No, 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 no. There were guys that, that they literally were a day off, and the guy who got it to the day did it after the contest had closed, and I got all his details, and I was ready to go to the post office and start sending stuff. This is this is where we're at. So, uh, no, it it had to be to the day. Uh, is Lawrence a nice person? John Rambo 899 says, uh, no, is the very succinct response. It, no, absolutely. By nor, any standard. Nor, nor does he strive to be. Yeah, and that's even more important. Uh, there's enough nice in the world, as you can see. I, we don't need more, more nice. Uh, so this whole line is just a massive trade and we enter a similar boring yeah, endgame uh, like yesterday. Only, only 2300 says he took with the queen. Okay, we have the tie breaks. I don't think, it, it, like, it takes d4 is just not a move here. Yeah. I don't think, like, does the engine actually suggest this is stronger or something? No. Come on. 84 is just not a move in this position. Shocking, it actually, shocking, it actually does suggest it takes d4 is stronger here, but yeah, I Very I shocking. don't think I don't think it's a move you can make. I'm pretty sure it, it didn't even have occurred to him, and uh, I'm very confused as to why this is supposed to be better for white, for instance. Uh, no, I'm very sure queen takes d4 is uh, the, the, the way to play for a win here. Uh, even if engines disagree, and engines disagreeing is obviously these days a very, very legitimate reason to tr mistrust my assessment, for instance. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that 
if we don't tell people what the engine says here, and we show this position to a number of strong RAM masters, uh, it takes D4 will get mentioned as the second legal move. But I don't think I don't think anybody actually chooses it over chooses uh, it over Queen takes D4. Uh, Bishop D6 also played. Yeah, we're kind of headed towards exactly the kinds of structures that we yeah. discussed. Uh, as I had the, the the engine running slightly earlier, I did notice that in some positions, such as this one, the engine does suggest the move Queen B8, which I. Uh, the idea of trying to get the bishop to e5 did cross mm -hmm. my mind, but I didn't trust queen b8. I thought it might lose material, but uh, computers suggest it is very much playable. And then, yes, I quite like it because uh, I think provoking knight e6, fe6 is in general going to make black's position slightly easier to play. And specifically getting the bishop to e5 does... Uh, does uh, uh, improve black's, uh, black's situation quite a bit. Um, well, only only twenty three hundred uh, says I think with xd four allows rook c eight, which hurts white. I don't think that really is necessarily true at all. It hasn't been played, but even if it was played, let's say I go like even the most sort of straightforward fashion. If even if I play something like this, I don't think you like d five d four is a very legitimate plan in these types of positions. But I'm not sure you want to be allowing. Yeah, uh, something like this, and then he takes d4 and castles short. Because I think, even if it's fine for black, I don't think very many people play like that uh, in a mass draw game here. And uh, where were we? Um, and if you include castles here, white can play something like rook d1, and d5 d4 is probably never happening anyway. Um, and then we we get a very similar type situation that we will get in the game. But I do take your point that rook c8 might, m may have been uh, a more, uh, sort of a cleaner solution uh, rather than bishop d6. Mm. Yep. So we're 12 moves in here. Uh, they both uh, are down to sort of below, below an hour, so quite a lot of thinking. Uh, which is unsurprising, unsurprising considering that uh, Richard kind of deviated about as early as you can expect in a game between two 2700 plus players, which is move five with white. <laughs> Doesn't happen every day. No. Uh, and uh, yeah, potentially this is going to be a bit of a dry game, honestly, because uh, in particular, if uh, Dmitry chooses sort of the more the more straightforward way of playing this, which is just snap on a four, uh, when the threats against the d5 pawn become uh, quite unpleasant, which is going to be soon. Once rook fd1 and bishop f3 happens, you do have to address it somehow. So if you choose to take on a four and just play like rook c8, queen b6, rook fd8, it's going to be a position where white definitely has legitimate chances for something, but good defensive players make a draw in those types of positions, I think, more often than they don't. And Andrekin, I think, definitely is a very sound defensive player. Yeah, this might be a decent moment for us to take a breather. Um, I need... So yesterday there was a bit of a, a, a controversy in chat because I said, guess which tea I had, and chamomile apparently isn't tea. It's yeah, a... Yeah, so it's a bit... Yeah, like, it's, it's very... Un like What is it? It's a flower. What is it? It's a flower, isn't it? It's an infusion. Like if you if you talk about the the, the sort of a drink it is, I think the the those flowery things are called infusions. So uh, it's not strictly tea. Yeah, a bit like a tomato is actually a fruit and not a vegetable. Not the analogy doesn't quite work, but. You know, hold your hands up all you yeah. like, sir. Shrug, shrug emoji, yeah. Shrug emoji. So I'm going to get an infusion-based chai, and Peter's going to get a glass of water, and we're going to come back to this very balanced position in just, like, a few minutes, and we're going to see what happens. In the meantime, this is a great moment for you to do all the wonderful things I was suggesting earlier. Become premium. Look at the series. Play a game of chess in the play zone. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, the blah 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 part. Feed your cats. Yeah. Um, pet your dogs. Uh, All that. Sing, yeah, that, that is also very very good advice. Sing a lullaby. I don't know why you would do that, but we'll be back in a few minutes, anyways. See mm. you. Soon. See you soon.
Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. When I saw her for the first time, it was love at first sight. I love how rich and complex she is, how sharp and principled her first steps, how graceful her movement. Paris is a city of love. I've come to find my love for the French defense. E5, it's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against one E4, based on one E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique Move Trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshal Gambit against the Spanish, with three Knight F6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there, Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on Chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5, Patsers. Hi everyone, welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. 
Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the you know, his non-chess team. So I see some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand. And we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. And welcome back to our continued coverage of the second game of the finals in Belgrade, where Richard Rapport is trying to find a, a plus here for White uh, in a position which feels like it shouldn't be very much. But if anyone is better here, it definitely is White. Uh, whoever wins this game wins the entire uh, leg of the Grand Prix. If there is a draw, uh, there's going to be tie breaks tomorrow, which we will also, of course, cover. Starts same time. Uh, 3 p.m. Central European, uh, and uh, on a break, I thought that we, we kind of we went into a sort of a, a bit of an in-depth discussion of what Richard feels about his chances of qualifying, putting I think the cart slightly ahead of the horse there because we have not really talked about the standings as they are right now no. and things of that nature. And since this is a bit of a quiet position, perhaps now is a good time. Mm -hmm. to to bring that up, and uh, on your screen here, you see the current standings with the with the two asterisks uh, denoting the the players who are still in action in in our final. Obviously, one of them will have three more points by winning the final. There are no, uh, you know, split points if you win it in standard time controls, or if you win it on a tie break, you still get the thirteen if you win the leg. Uh, meaning that Richard will have either seventeen, as he already has guaranteed, or twenty. Uh, and Andrekin has at least 10 and might have 13. And uh, we, we gave this talk yesterday, but obviously uh, many of the people watching us right now were not here yesterday. Uh, 17 appears to be a magic number, uh, uh, which I think a lot of people have a lot of ways of hitting. Because 17, is, uh, 17 equals uh, winning one leg and coming second in the group, second in the pool stage. Uh, 17 also means uh, getting to the semis once and getting to the finals once and losing. And yeah, here you see the, the, the point split uh, once again, thanks to Thierry. Uh We also haven't really covered the... This being the final, we kind of glossed over what the structure for this tournament is. And the structure is for the first two, just as for the, thir for the third one, which starts on the 22nd of March in Berlin. 16 players are split into four pools of four players and only one player uh, qualifies out of that double round robin to play a semi-final uh, and then the final. Uh, and uh, uh, the points are, as you can see on your screen, uh, so 17 does appear to be uh, something that a lot of people can achieve. And there could be a bit of a pileup on 17. We also found some scenarios which allow for a reasonably large tie on 20 points. Mm -hmm. But that is much, much less likely. Uh, having a, like a three-way tie on 20 is not impossible. We, we definitely, we yesterday we found some scenarios where uh, this happens. They basically involve uh, Livon finishing second uh, and losing the final to either MBL or Wesley or Anish, I guess. Or maybe even Linier, although Linier, I think, is in the same half of the draw. So... I think uh, Linier and MV and, and uh, Livon would meet in the semis, not in the finals. Because uh, there's also, uh, I'm, I'm kind of jumping from topic to topic here, but 
uh, the four pools, you, who, who, your semifinal opponent is not dependent on how many points you score in your pool. The winner of group, uh, the winner of pool A plays strictly the winner of pool B, and the winner of pool C plays strictly the winner of pool D. So, uh, and the, the the drawing of lots for who plays which pool has already been done for Berlin. Right. Is very very, and relevant. that was done randomly, right? Yeah, that was done. That was done as a Zoom call, basically. What uh, what right. we were told is uh, there was a Zoom call uh, during which uh, players kind of pointed out at pieces of paper, and uh, they were shown the number on that piece of paper, and that is your uh, your seating. And this is where it gets extremely interesting. And yeah, once again, thanks very much for the graphic. It's a it's a very very useful useful graphic there, and there under the uh, the letter A, you see the absolutely unbelievable group. <laughs> uh, group of death, as they would say. Group of death and also, and also, like, very, very unlucky outcome, I think. In, like, in as much as there is RNG in chess, this was RNG. And RNG was not really working in favor of people playing in that group. Uh, because uh, we will have in that group two winners of two finalists of the uh, the first Berlin leg, plus a finalist here, uh, meaning that only one of those three people can actually qualify out of group and continue uh, fighting for, for sort of the the, the, the daddy points, the, the big points, uh, and everybody else will uh, immediately uh, be relegated to uh, not really fighting for the qualification. Uh, and uh, yeah, Berlin will be unbelievably interesting to watch. I think in terms of uh, in terms of all of these uh, little equations, uh, because the situation will be quite clear. People will know what they need to chase, and uh, there will be uh, very very interesting permutations. And people with very clear targets in mind will will have to, I think, <clears throat> probably play uh, a lot more committedly for specific outcomes because there there will really be no no saving it for later it will be the final the final leg of the entire thing uh and uh, yeah just just to finish that conversation uh uh pool c and d feature uh a pool in which uh mvl and wesley are the favorite in pool c i think and pool d feature is basically the repeat of uh, one of the groups in this tournament where Anish will be in the same group as Nikita Vitugov, Amin Tabatabai, and Yuan Gi will replace Hare Krishna. So, uh, and, and the winners of those two play against each other, meaning that for both MVL and Anish, who I think are very much sort of crowd favorites and people and players, I think people would very much like to see playing the candidates again. Uh, they still very much have a path to uh to putting themselves in a in a very good spot to qualify but both of them probably need to win uh win the entire thing as uh, as things stand i hope i made some sense i mean with the, with the help of graphics i think what i what i was talking about was at least somewhat decipherable but uh main takeaway is uh getting to 20 points is going to be very very good getting to 17 uh, is going to give you a decent chance of qualifying, but it might not be enough. Uh, and uh, this coming back to the game yeah. we're covering today, uh, I think has a very uh, you know large bearing on how uh, Richard approaches it. But we just don't know in which direction it will shift him. It's kind of curious that like after all the speeches, we still don't know what is the best strategy and what is the strategy that he, that he will choose because. Uh, Continuing to fight today, like generating generating risks to try and win today is one strategy. Or playing safely, hoping that perhaps uh, Andre can misplays it somewhere and he gets a kind of a free roll. And reasonably happily moving everything to tomorrow is, is another. And both of them are definitely sort of legitimate choices you can make. But I just don't know Richard enough to... Uh, to, to get any kind of a grasp on which one he is more likely to um, to, to gravitate towards. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, my instinct tells me that because he doesn't necessarily not fancy himself in the quicker time controls, that he's not going to really go crazy here. And if if we end up 
halving out, so be it. If the end the position ends up diffusing. Um, He's played rook g3 and rook d1, which... Yeah, and we we, we yeah. went on a break after queen takes d4, bishop d6, yeah. where I kind of automatically assumed that the bishop will get developed this way. And instead, Richard played g3, to which Andrekin very understandably did play rook c8, a move that, as our chat was telling us, perhaps made quite a lot of sense even on a previous move, just trying to develop the bishop all the way to c5. Um, and... Uh, try to play for sort of direct d5, d4 counterplay as 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 immediately and as forcefully as possible. But uh, bishop d6, I felt, was the most natural move in the position, so I was kind of expecting it. Uh, g3 makes sense, though, not just because we want the bishop to be developed on this diagonal uh, anyway, but also because uh, stopping bishop takes h3, uh, h2 counterplay might be something that becomes relevant at some point, because... If you think about these types of positions, we're still with white not threatening to take on d5 here. Let's say if we play rook c8 here, taking on d5 is still impossible because this very standard counterplay exists. Yeah. And having the pawn on g3 improves your chances of actually creating that threat. So it's a logical choice, but the drawback is you are not preparing to castle straight away. Uh, your king is still only one. You're definitely not castling queenside with the c file open, so you absolutely want to evacuate the king out of the center. So you're not preparing castling. And also after rook c8, which I think is immediately noticeable, is that if you play bishop g2, you are allowing rook c4, which is not the end of the world, but it definitely is something that yeah. needs to be weighed, needs, needs to yeah. be assessed, and uh, Richard will have to figure out if he is worried about this or not. Uh, which I think is the explanation for why he played rook d1 first. Mm -hmm. He is still making, uh, you know, he, he's making all the moves that he absolutely needs to make uh, before committing uh, to any kind of a bishop move. You also arguably already threatened to take on d5, but let's say if black castles here, I would be very, very uncomfortable even considering this, because let's say after queen a5 check, black's counterplay looks scary to me. Like knight c3, bishop b5 is borderline lost, I would suspect. Uh, yeah. Maybe you Probably. can save yourself after queen before, but you're not going to be enjoying any of not, that. Not in this universe. Yeah. Uh, before bishop, before queen takes a3 also looks kind of horrible. And queen d2, queen takes d2, uh, we also, like, allowing something like this feels insane. Yeah. For just, for just one pawn. It just doesn't feel like we've, we're gaining here enough to seriously no. consider any of these options. So uh, I'm pretty sure Black can completely ignore the fact that the knight on d5 uh, currently, that the pawn on d5 currently is quote unquote hanging. But I'm pretty sure Richard is not going to take it. So if Black wants to castle, Black definitely can castle right now. The question is, what will he do after castles? Yeah, he's gone queen a5 though, and oh, he went queen a5. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. That you know, there's definitely other options, and specifically queen a5. Like this might be playable, right? Yeah, that might be playable, but I was thinking if we take on e6 and go bishop h3 like you did in other lines. Oh, wow, you want to, yeah, this is... I just wanted to show why. Yeah, this is nice. This yeah. is nice. Yeah, so, that's, that's yeah. cute, actually. So, knight e6, f6, bishop h3, that definitely does make a lot of sense, but... Um, Are you forced to go king f7? Because e5 no. is... Wasted. I mean, I mean, my... Somewhat shockingly, I can actually, I think, still do this. Still do this? Bishop e6, uh, bishop, e bishop b2 is... Not yeah, I, this is maybe playable. Uh, my question is if maybe uh, if Sorry, queen yeah. e5 is strong, because that would be queen a Queen e5, that's cute. Um, and unusual. Yeah. But let me let me look at this position for a bit longer because yeah, let, let me it, it's well. a critical position. And as as you've mentioned yourself, King of Seven is uh, a very very playable move uh, in and of itself. Because let's let's say castles, we go Rook C Four, Queen D Three, Bishop B Five. Uh, if you give White time to play something like Knight E Two, Knight E Four, you might be worse. But you are generating a lot of very immediate counterplay mm -hmm. here. The King side is under the Queen side is under pressure, and uh, even if the Knight let's say lands on the Four and we just snap it off, it's not that horrible for Black. Uh, so black definitely does not need to go uh, to go all in here. I, uh, there are 
very reasonable uh, sort of uh, restrained options available to Dmitry. But um, yeah, I'm curious about Bishop takes a3 because it's it's an attempt to equalize on the spot. It's an attempt to just say uh, structurally I might be slightly worse if I kind of drag this out. So why not just make it work here, calculate correctly and and deeply enough so that I'm sure of my conclusions and just sort of equalize straight up. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, bishop e6, bishop b2 does seem to cost white a great deal. This doesn't seem to be playable, right? So it's uh, you can take on a3, but if all else fails, I'm kind of curious if I can actually go for greed and take with the rook. But if all else fails, I can go for this position. And this is I'm, never worse for black. Which I'm pretty sure is just completely fine for black. Yeah, I, I can't see how this can be worse for black at all. Yeah. With the two outside passers. Yes, you can take on d5 here, but like we, we get a position where white has the passers in the center and black has the outside passers. Like I have no idea why it should be worse for black at all. Mm. No, no, this seems to be completely this fine. So BA, fine. and also as I mentioned, you can actually go for greed. You can, you can do something like this and say, show me you have greed something. Is good. Just, yeah, like queen e five, rook e eight, or rook c six, and then I want to play queen c seven. And yes, my king is on f seven, but you don't really have pieces attacking it. Yeah, and I am, I am sort of a healthy pawn up for now. And I, I'm very much looking forward to playing some end games where I'm, where, where I'm just a pawn up. So, definitely yeah. an option. Uh, Queen A5 was really good, actually. Queen A5 yeah. was very, very smart, and also I think it's an indication that uh, Andrekin is also like he hasn't resigned himself to just having to defend for the rest of the game. Mm. Uh, he, he noticed there's a sharper option, and he, he went for it straight up. And in fact, White's play here looks kind of forced, doesn't it? Because it doesn't mm. look as though we can... Well, bishop takes a3 is just a threat, so you might mm. have to do this. As well. Yeah, and, and also, like, I've pointed out queen e5 here, and uh, uh, people in chat are saying 17 queen e5, but I did say that this move exists, and my current thinking is, I think I can spend a tempo on rook c6, weirdly. Wow. Bishop e6, bishop b2 anyway, bishop d5. Wow. E8. Although, yeah, now that I look at this, this probably does lose. Or at least it's very, very risky. I, ha I actually haven't lost yet after knight e8, but I'm not really enjoying this very much. I have a feeling this might cost me dearly after simply like white castles and then... Rook c3, rook... rook yeah, like rook c3, even queen b7, I think, just wins, right? Because I just... Right. Win, oh, yeah, right, right, right. I win material back. So, yeah, queen e5 is basically what it hinges on. And so far, I haven't really been able to work it out. I suspect you shouldn't really engage with this as black because it's very risky. But I was curious about specifically rook c6, which looks like a very, very slow move. But if it works, it works. Uh, but yeah, currently, after bishop takes e6, I cannot find a good way to... Uh, rook c7 instead is best, says uh, Max Quigi. Yeah, but if you have to play rook c7, I'm kind of no longer a particular believer in the entire concept because after queen takes a6 check, you'll have to play something like, I don't know, king f8 and white castles. And yeah, maybe you're not lost, but you're definitely like, this is not something you no. specifically aim for. Uh, this is how you lose these positions. Um, and uh, yeah, you, I... I if this is the best reply to queen e5, I'm pretty sure uh, Dmitry doesn't blunder queen e5 because it really is the only move here that you're worried of uh, creating this very, very strong threat of queen takes e6. Uh, so yeah, it's it's very difficult to blunder. And it's immediately obvious that it, it might just be very, very strong. Uh, meaning that he probably... Oh. So he might go for king f7 is what you're saying. Yeah. Is king f7, or maybe you start with rook c4 and then you... Right. Uh, queen d3, and then you maybe consider something. Humor me just for one second, uh, Peter. Queen mm -hmm. a7 doesn't exist, right? I mean, it exists, but I don't know if we need to be worried about it necessarily. Yeah, it does exist, though. I thought it might not be that great, but... it's. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a move that... Uh, it's, it's a difficult move to play, but uh, after bishop takes a3, I guess we can just castle, right? Mm, yeah. 
Yeah, the, the, the issue here is that, yeah, we, we are very worried about allowing some kind of a position like this where we have won a couple, well, white, of, white, so we've white won a couple of kind of not very important pawns on the queen side, yeah. but we haven't secured our king position. And now yeah. some tactics will start happening. And like queen b8 check immediately. Uh, queen b8, queen there b8. Is queen d8. Yeah, there is queen d8. You, you, I, so far, I don't know why this loses. It might not actually lose, uh, but it's, it's not great. Uh, yeah. Flinsky says, wow, engine wants king of seven. This is the move that we immediately made. It's not really surprising. This is no, very this often, is the human move. Yeah, this is very often exactly how you hold, hold the pawn on e6 in these types of positions. It's a, sort of entirely standard and isn't even all that bad, honestly. I was just trying to uh, solve the, the entire issue by tactical means so that, so that we don't have to play this position. Because it might be a bit annoying for black. It's not going to be horrible, but it might be a bit annoying for Black. Yeah, I, I switched the engine on for a second there. The engine says, just go Queen C5, followed by Bishop B5, you're completely fine. Just mm -hmm. does not really give White any kind of a significant advantage at all. And I'm not shocked. As I, as I mentioned, King F7 is, is something that you do quite happily here, and you, you, you don't really worry about it all that much. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting, interesting, interesting. This is a curious position. Also, we have to mention, of course, that none of this has been played yet, and there might be some <laughs> instead of knight takes e6, but I'm not sure what they are, because allowing bishop takes a3 here, like playing bishop g2, allowing bishop a3, and just, I don't know, playing ba, feels like very, very counterintuitive, because of just, like, once again, the, the existence of this option should heavily discourage you from doing it. And, and that's even before we consider that Rook takes C3 exists. He's gone Rook C1. I am really not. What? A, I am not a fan of this. What is this move? This is very slow. Rook C1, Rook D1, and then Rook C1. No, 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 no. This is not how chess works. Uh, yeah, old, old but gold, eh? That's it. Old but gold. Wow, I mean... He's, he's kind of banking on always having the bailout with ninety six and Bishop H3 in the future. It might even be, strictly speaking, true, but I'd be worried playing like this with White. Oh my God, it's just... It's just... I'd be worried. Oof. I don't even think I could bring myself to play it. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a difficult thing to it's a difficult thing to force yourself to do, and uh, yeah, we, another discussion we've had on stream, I think, with Gusti recently on the topic of, uh, you know, how easy it is to just admit some of your previous choices were wrong, and correct them like this. Which I mean, quite clearly, uh, if you play rook, if you play rook d one here, invite queen a five, which is a very useful move in most positions. And then just go rook d one c one and reply. You are very much admitting that your previous move was. Uh, at the very least, an inaccuracy. Uh, but being able to uh, kind of completely ignore the pride aspect of it and just make those moves anyway is a very, very important skill. I mean, it might be actually a decent move to securing the position a little bit, but it... I mean... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's... Uh, I don't see a refutation of it, let me put it like that. I mm -hmm. Yeah, and Chad also says that it's it's not losing. It's just an odd move having played Rook D one on the previous one. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, if that's how you how you frame it, it is absolutely an odd move. But uh, he clearly did not feel very impressed by the option of ninety six bishop h three. Uh, so he is keeping things open. But the fact that we are actually talking about there being a refutation here is is very telling. Uh, I found a very cute idea for black, but it doesn't quite work. I think after bishop c5, the biggest issue is uh, queen e5 once again. But after queen g2, I found a very cute idea, which I... I Go on. <laughs> uh, I thought this might work. That is very cute. But then I realized that I actually have to continue calculating. But we are probably doing well after queen e5 check, right? Yeah, right. King f3, d4 is check. Yeah, yeah this is a check, and then, yeah, we... We can't really do. We can't really be doing all that poorly with a with a extra. Can we king g two? Can we carry on? Yeah, we, we actually have to take on f one, but black is like at least completely fine here and probably better after something like this followed by castle. Yeah. Um, 
getting getting carried away. And as I mentioned, yeah. I think eighty five is a much larger issue here for Black with ninety six being a very very annoying threat since this knight cannot really go to any of the good squares because queen takes g seven exist. Doesn't queen d six work? I mean, it works to to a degree, but I think like I play bishop h three here and. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, uh, hang on. Bishop d six exists, right? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's maybe it's actually not bad at all because if it versus knight takes e six in this position, we might be interested in just getting an endgame straight away. And this is a like if if it's an endgame, it's a very safe endgame for Black. Black sometimes will be slightly worse in these types of positions if it's a middle game and the king is not entirely safe. But if we're playing this as an endgame, it's just completely and utterly fine for Black. Maybe even ever so slightly better for Black with those plans yeah. existing. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, bishop c5 is, I don't know how natural it is to do that. I'm actually kind of wondering if we can take on a four here Whoa! and just play. I know it's a very, very ugly move, but I want to just completely rule out knight takes e6. Okay. So um, queen f4, castle. Queen f4, I just want to castle here and say, I want to play knight e4 next. If you develop the bishop here, I want to play rook c4 and d5, d4. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm just saying, yes, structurally, I've traded, I've traded away my bishop pair and made my position look less beautiful. But I'm so far ahead in development that I would, I would actually like for white to kind of show me where the equality is. Uh, this may be overstating things a little bit, but I'm curious. I think it's not entirely unreasonable. I think it's playable to, to do it this way. White probably is fine at something like queen d4, knight e4, and maybe even something really kind of uh, stupid like f3, and then rook takes c3, and everything. If, if everything comes off, we take with the queen, we go king d2, bishop d3, we're not really worse with white. But I feel like bishop takes f4 is, at the very least, a playable choice. Um, if we castle here, I assume the plan is just to take and play bishop h3 and claim that getting the rook to c1 stops all of the shenanigans with bishop takes a3, and then we castle and we got a position similar to what we've been discussing earlier, because black probably plays king of seven even here, to be honest. I, th I like king of seven better than rook e8, because I would like maybe the rooks to be doubled on the c file, and the king is doing a good enough job protecting this. But yeah, castles feels like it sort of lets white off the hook here a little bit. Uh, queen of four is not forced mm. though. Yeah, I absolutely not. Yeah, and this is another problem. I was going to ask. Uh, yeah, GF actually looks very, very logical. Just not vacating. Yeah, the... G that's. I was thinking of that move, GF yeah. actually. No. Yeah, specifically because after castles, rook G one is extremely strong, which is something I kind of under underestimated. Just how annoying this is. Yeah, I think GF specifically <clears throat> is what refutes my idea. Yeah, having having put this position on the board and thought about this for like thirty seconds, I am no longer very impressed with my own idea here. <laughs> uh, let's not play bishop takes a four. No, it's, it, there's something about that move as well that just feels so unnecessary. This dark square bishop plays such a mm -hmm. such a good role in so many lines. It really feels like a shame to have to give it absolutely, up. Absolutely, absolutely, don't disagree with any of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That feeling when no GF. <laughs> Good. Who feeling, did that? A feeling. A feeling. Many people in Twitch chat. I think are. Oh, that's harsh. Come on. Intimately familiar with. That's harsh. Come on. Don't, don't give. You know, Peter. This is. There's nothing wrong with no GF. Don't worry. It's fine. It is fine. It's just. It's uh, fine. I, it's fine. It's good. There is. It's there's good. no stigma. But I'm. I'm just saying. It's a. There is no stigma. I'm just saying it's a familiar feeling. Why? Why? I feel personally attacked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what is the most likely out? So, the most likely move here is probably. What is the most likely move here? Actually, is black. It's not completely clear to me. Yeah. And the, the 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 more we're talking about this, the the less rook c1 feels like a weird choice, right? It's just. Oh. Kind of kudos to Richard for even, you know, kind of considering it seriously and coming to those conclusions, because I think it's very, very easy to just ignore that option altogether and um, never 
never spending like three seconds to even analyze this. Mm. I'm t I'm trying to concoct stuff, but I'm I'm really struggling here. No, I'm 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 definitely not feeling comfortable playing either side here. Well, I mean, of the things we've discussed and kind of put on the board, I actually am the most in favor of the move bishop c5 of the things we've we've talked about. Okay. Uh, which is also will not an an obvious or an easy decision since we're currently connecting it with the idea of playing bishop b6 in this position. None of this is natural and also like we've completely ignored the fact that white can perhaps try to win some material although i do have bishop before check here Oof. but i mean variation continues sort of actually it doesn't yeah because queen c5 check just wins everything variation doesn't actually continue right so you have to play a takes b and then king g2 and you are probably not also doing particularly hot here as well Although no. for, this is less clear. This might be kind of semi-playable. Although, I don't know, queen c6. Queen c6 maybe. All a bit random. Yeah, it, it, it does feel like we're making absolutely random decisions, but. Feels totally random. Okay, so. Uh, rook c6 for maybe doubling rook after castles. Yeah, rook c6 is a very logical move in this types of position. Yeah, rook c6 is who suggested yeah, that? It's, it's good for you for, for suggesting it, Mortaza, but that's a good move. my issue with that is once again, it allows, okay. the, it allows the bailout. It allows well, is the bailout after king f7? Yeah, I mean, just castles. And rook rook F7, and, uh, I just need to. Are we worried about e4s? So we... mm, in some positions, I don't know if it's already quick enough here but if it works i would very much like be interested in it also Why not though the pin dance even just like doing this right i i, I unfortunately for for white we, we cannot trade everything oh, we can't queenie one exists really. yeah but we can play knight takes c1 and then put it on d3 and white is not really losing very much here right it doesn't feel horrible it feels like black definitely solved all of their problems but right it does not really feel mm -hmm horrible at all um so but yeah absolutely very decent move and good good of you yeah, looks suggested but <clears throat> just feels like it's a kind of a move that says i want to equalize but i'm probably not better here and i'm giving up on the idea of looking for advantage but maybe there's just no advantage maybe we're just kind of very very much overselling how good all of this is for black so very much a possibility. Mm. Yeah, I'm kind of a bit out of. Uh... Yeah, it's 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 one of those situations. Five, uh, I don't think is going to be played somehow. I've got a. We would very much like to see a move here uh, uh, out of Andrekin because that would give us a kind of a better indication of where this is going. Uh, in the meantime, Rod Corporan is asking, I missed yesterday's games. Looks like not the most interesting. There are always some talking points, but yeah, your your general assessment there is absolutely spot on. It's just, it, it was a, uh, like Andrekin played a line where he, I'm pretty sure he knew it was going to be extremely likely to be a draw if uh, Rapport knows what he's doing, but it still allows for some, you know, what is, called checks basically like not not checks as in uh, trying to attack the king but like you 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 check the knowledge of your opponent and if your opponent provides said knowledge you you, you shake his hand and you go play the next one uh and uh, e e even you know as far as checks of that nature go it was a very very timid one but andrekin was playing uh after a very tense very difficult uh tie break uh, against Anish, whereas Richard won in classical, so also understandable that Dmitri perhaps did not feel like uh, playing a full, full-blooded game of chess was in his best interest yesterday. Um, Niklaus Cage says the tea discussion was the high point of yesterday's game. Yeah, yeah in in some ways, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yesterday's game was a little bit, 
a little bit dry, although it had a little, it had a little, some small moments in it. There were, there were some. You have to find these squeeby, squeeby properties to it. Yeah. So damn squeebishness was. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ever, ever um, so pleasant. That's right. Uh, so Andraken's got 31 minutes. Rapport has got 42 minutes, which feels it's like... It, you know, it, like it, if it doesn't simplify, the, the, the issue with this is yeah. that a lot of the lines that we're showing lead to very, very serious simplifications. Yeah. But in general, the, the amount of time they have left for 25 moves in this position is really not a lot. No, it's it's not. We, we we could have a very very interesting time trouble if it sharpens up from here, and there's definitely some potential for it become, to become much sharper. But there's also a ton of potential for just some tr like in particular, let's say if he if he does go for this, and uh, Rapport understandably declines to engage in the in the madness that is not takes d five and just goes takes queen takes 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 bishop h three. This does look like it kind of fizzles. Mm -hmm. and nothing much happens and then nobody really needs very much time in this game anymore because moves kind of make themselves for the most part but it could also become very very sharp and very tactical because you know it's move 15 and both kings are still in the center and uh, the, the white king actually in a lot of these lines uh, does not get to castle very easily so yeah, yeah uh it could get it, it. It could get exciting. It could get mm. exciting. It's gonna a lot's gonna depend on uh, and, uh, Dimitri's next move. Actually, the the the, the duck person in in chat says, "Please don't call him Richard." Yeah, I think. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm I, sorry. I, I was I was doing it this entire time, and uh, with Gusti, I think we kind of settled on calling him either Richie or Richard, which I think is better. Uh, yeah, Richie Richie is Richie is better in general, and Richard is just not. Because his name is Richard, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. If you pronounce the full name, it should be it should be Richard or or Richie. Right. I, think, I think he's perfectly okay with Richie as well. Yeah, uh, and yeah, thanks uh, thanks for that because really I need to snap out of it and stop stop using Richard. Yeah, unfortunately, I uh, I got another Hungarian name wrong when I was commentating. I, I was in Gibraltar commentating on the tournament. Mm -hmm. There was a young chap called Balash Chonka. Well, that's the correct name. Yeah. But uh, his name was written C C Z. C Z. Yeah. Or C Z O N K A, and I was calling him Sonka or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. I do yeah. apologize to all the Hungarians. It is a tricky language. Is Hungarian. Yeah. Um, but, I'm just not that not that bad with uh, with Hungarian names. Are you not? N not not horrible. Yeah, I, I think I've spoken to enough uh, Hungarians, and I've spoken to enough people who kind of know how the names names are supposed to be pronounced to have a kind of a decent decent guess as to what it's supposed to sound like. Yeah, and, uh, this, is, and this is why I'm so annoyed at myself for using Richard for like the entire broadcast today, which I I know it's incorrect, and I still was kind of autopiloting there. Apologies to all of our wonderful Hungarian mm. fans. In fact, we should call him Raport Rikat because they always start with the family mm. name first. Actually, yeah, that that used to kind of <laughs> not, not not bug me, but like whenever whenever I played against Peter Leko, uh, and like you you pay attention how people fill out their score sheets, right? And he would always mm -hmm. he would always write Leko, comma Peter, Peter, right? And I would think, yeah, why? <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, and they, it's not the only country that start with the family name first, right? No, definitely, in China. Definitely not, uh, definitely not but uh, yeah, it, you, and obviously it's his score sheet, so it really should. It's none of my concern. I shouldn't really be even looking. But have you, have you, you ever? Do you still do look, and you still kind of notice those things. And I've got some funny score sheet stories, by mm -hmm. the way. Like, have you ever played a guy where you're playing the, you, your mid game and he puts a question mark next to your move? I mean, that's no, that, that, yeah, that's happened to me before. 
or a double question mark. He's yeah, but those are just kind of you know assholes and uh, like you're trolling just, you, right? You just make a mental note that you know this person is just a probably not very nice and b. Like I think in most cases their assessment of the move might also be incorrect. Might also be wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like uh, I don't know, I don't know whether it was correct in regards to your move, but in general, like people who do this stuff, they kind of overestimate how good they are very, very yeah, often. Yeah, they. Do. Uh, <laughs> what do you What do you feel about players that note the time down every move? I do that so, myself. Oh, you do it yourself every single myself, move. You yeah. okay? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I, do, I, I used to do it. I've, I've never been too consistent with it, especially since now, obviously, most games are on DGC boards. But, um, yeah. no, I, but I, of course... And I, and I do that for both players, so... I, yeah, for, for, for both yeah. players. But it's, just, it's uh, just a tick, because I, I never actually use that information for anything. <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically become a kind of a, you know, habit slash... Right. Whatever, like, routine that you don't break out of, because it doesn't really cost you anything. It, like, it's... Right takes three seconds of my time and uh, that doesn't really occupy any brain cells or anything. It's just an autopilot thing that I do. But yeah, I, I do do that. I also uh, write down moves in full notation, which unless I'm in really, really ho horrible time trouble with no increment, then I go down to just saying... You mean knight f3 to e5? Yes. The entire thing, yeah. That's, that's, that's strong. Um... I, I was always wondering, like, did you ever meet a player where, let's say, this was, this would have been maybe not pre digital clock era, but where they deliberately didn't write down a move or stop writing moves, so you didn't know whether you were near move forty or not. Yeah, but all of those things are these are all angles, basically. Yeah, these, all, these, yeah exactly. They, these are all kind of you. You want to call them gamesmanship or, or just straight yeah, up. They're, angle shooting and yeah know, it's it's more of a gamesmanship thing and uh yeah, yeah. there's definitely uh, there's definitely people even reasonably well known people who have been during their playing careers very very famous for writing moves down in batches and other people's time travels which is straight up illegal and you can and should actually call the arbiter and 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 say or, or duplicating or duplicating the move so that it looks as though you've reached move four. Okay, that that is kind of straight up cheating, and uh, that's straight I, up. I've seen I, that as well. I don't think I've ever had that done against me, but yeah, people who just who just don't write down moves in time travel so as just save time, where yeah. rules rules very very explicitly state that you can actually skip one ply. So if you if your opponent plays a move, you can reply and then write down his and yours. But if you go okay. above two ply, you are breaking the rules of chess. Okay. Uh, if there is increment, if there is no increment, you sh you should still mark down like you, you should make a dash. But skipping skipping the dashes, people understand. Like if you're down to thirty seconds and there's no increment and you kind of miss out on a couple of dashes, nobody really will you know call the arbiter. But in a situation where you have time, uh, you are supposed to do that. And people who don't do that are very very obviously angling to a degree. Uh, and it's extremely annoying and should not really be tolerated, but you also feel like a kind of a weird snitch calling the arbiter. So very often people kind of s skate by and nobody really yeah. calls them up on that. Um, but yeah, those those examples are, you know, manifold. Like there's there's plenty and some very, very famous, you know, players slash chess personalities were very famous for that. Uh, you know, the, 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 I, I remember kind of a famous incident where uh, a game finished and then the, the, the player who finished the game legit kind of signed the score sheet and then immediately said, you want to go outside? Uh, <laughs> and and uh, they didn't actually go outside, but the suggestion no. was made uh, after the, a couple of time troubles in that game. <laughs> and, yeah, so it's a yeah. thing that I, I, exists. Yeah, I've, uh, I don't know why I just thought of this while we're at a bit of a pause in the game, but uh, just talking about interesting chess incidents. Not many have happened in my life. Well, a few have happened. But there was one time where I was playing Catronius at the... Actually, you might have been there, Peter, the European Individual Championships in Liverpool in 2008. Were you around? Maybe you weren't playing. Maybe no. you were too strong. 
maybe you're too strong for, for that. But we got a position which was, to, to put it mildly, was so insane that the arbiter walked by and asked me if the position had been altered with because it just <laughs> wasn't a position that seemingly looked legal. It would be beautiful to get it actually up on the screen. It was a position where my rook was, and my bishop was kind of behind a wall of his pawns. So it looked as though it was just, the pawns were all ironed out for him. And it looked as impossible that my rook and bishop could have got behind the pawns. Yeah, um, yeah it's happened, yeah. The, the, in the meantime, uh, Dmitry actually has made a move. Oh, Dmitry has made a move. Let's, let's go. Also, there. the cloaks okay. kind of got adjusted again, which is something that is also now happening a little bit with the GGT. Uh, broadcast and it now says 44 minutes. I will actually check if that's the actual clock situation because it looks like it's incorrect. Yeah, he should have 22 minutes. So uh, the, the website says he has 22 minutes uh, and not 44, which is a large difference. And he also spent 22 minutes on this move, uh, which is that's quite a thing, isn't it? Actually, yeah. takes takes bishop h3 played. Well, I mean, we assume bishop h3 played very quickly, but just on the topic of people kind of not recognizing the position, there was a very famous incident. Uh, once again, yeah, and people are now telling me I absolutely need to name the players who were go on. about to go outside. Not happening, no, I'm not <laughs> not going there. And I'm also not naming the person in the next story, but there was a kind of a famous story during one European, I think, Club Cup, I think it was, where uh, a game in a very important match reached this specific position, which is is one of the main main lines of the Slav, of the Slav gambit where after knight a6 they go bishop f8 of course you you can't actually take because queen g8 is made and a reasonably well known chess personality walked by and kind of angrily pointed at the board and said you have the wrong bishop on f8 <laughs> and uh so, so, when was this European club cup around maybe 2013 ish. Okay, got it. Beautiful. Uh, and then he caught himself and he was, you know, everybody chuckled and. and <laughs> on. But still, like it, considering that, you know, this is somebody who is a very, very strong player in, in his own right and was, I think, coaching at the time. And like it was just, it was like a very chuckle worthy moment. Uh, but anyway, uh, we are here as expected after Castles takes takes. Yes. We played. And as I was saying, even in this position with Rook F8 available. Right. You still play king of seven because you want right. the rooks. You want the rooks on the c four. Right, makes perfect sense. Cute to play castles in king f seven, though, right? It's kind of it's a, yeah. it's a little it's a little unusual. Yeah, and I think the point here is once again, I think he was looking for a way to be better. I'm pretty sure he knows he is not really in in too much trouble here at all, but he was looking for something that may have been giving him. Uh, an edge, and uh, he ended up not finding anything spectacular, so he uh, defaulted to what is always going to be a normal, normal kind of a sequence here: just connecting rooks, playing king of seven when the pawn on the six is attacked. And uh, yeah, white will now castle because bishop takes a three, like with some with some follow up, might still be a threat. So you definitely want to finish development, and black can play like rook c four, queen d three, and rook f c a to bishop b five, or uh, what have you. Should be completely fine for black. Uh, yeah. Looks good for black. And somebody has actually just tweeted at me the position that I had against Katrone. I would love to get this up on screen. Let Maybe me, I can... Uh, let me... Can I, can I share my... I guess I can't share my screen quickly. Not, not really, but uh, like if, if I can find it on Twitter, but it's not really the, the setting up of the position. I think will be the biggest challenge. Oh no, you were you were you were uh, tagged, Peter, in your Twitter. Ah, okay. So this you you were tagged. So if you could, I don't know how we well, would then, then setting up the position is the challenge. Yeah, but uh, oh, I see. That is legitimately a very very strange position. Yeah, and he came, and he and he, I, it was such a funny moment in my career. It really was. Yeah. That this position was at all legal. Yeah, and uh, a very funny comment actually by uh, Gukeli uh, saying uh, that this position that we have on the board right now, and uh, instead I could have played Rook F8, and we would have had the same position. That's that's cute. And, well. and and Castles and Castles actually kind of feels wrong. In Castles doesn't really feel wrong, but it's it's kind of funny just that those are identical. The difference, of course, being that. After Rook F8, White 
can and probably will do something like bishop g2 instead because the king on e8 is so stupid but yeah it's kind of a uh, kind of a funny thing to notice and uh oh thanks uh thanks for that yeah i, I don't know i don't know how to set that up i can wait wait, wait. Go satiris is gonna satiris is gonna find a way so okay there's your there's your story um okay so king of seven on the board now with white to play here, you don't really have too many options. So no, you, Carl... do yeah, you do castle and uh, you go from there. I don't think there is really anything else. But after castles, rook c4, queen d3. Uh... So is there a difference between going rook fc8 or bishop b5 first? That's I'm wondering about that because uh, I think white... like there might be. White probably goes knight e2 regardless, but I'd much rather play rook fc8, honestly. I. Wait a second. I have an idea. Rook fc8. Can I go e4? Uh, this this might be the reason uh, bishop b5 could be slightly more precise. Yeah, this this is might that be that cute. It is cute. Yeah, because uh, but 94, if yeah, 94, 94, and there are pins and 96. Yeah, there are pins and things. And if you go uh, e4, d4, d4. That's what I was trying to work out. Now, but now at least 92. Even after 92, I think we've uh, we actually kind of like this for white because it restricts, yes, quite, quite well. Yeah, and you've got yeah. f4. I, I think this is actually a very, very good reason not to do it whatsoever. And just go, yeah, bishop e5 is precise. You go e4 okay. anyway. So, but now that at least there isn't some 96. I guess the biggest, like, if if all else fails, we can make a draw like this, right? Rook c3 and just go, I don't know, queen d3, rook d3, and whatever like g5 i guess just to get it to g4 and cover the e6 pawn white is a little bit better though white is if, if this is the best black has white is quite happy here but I, I assume there is something stronger maybe we can actually once again go for full greed and no. just take, take like this no 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 well i mean i cover all no the, full greed uh I, I i cover all of the squares which do you kind of well most of them not all but i i cover as black most of the things that make me really scared mm. okay b4 b4 queen b6 rookie one you want to go queen d4 does that exist mm. queen d4 does exist i also would like to point out that maybe queen b5 is quite strong as well just to try to get some kind of an endgame straight away, really? right? Really? Yeah, it might be. Shift your, shift your, like, might be a good move, make though. you, make you spend a tempo on something. Here. Mm -hmm. I uh, like it. Yeah, I thought about bishop g two, which does force rook d four, leaving the the e file. But then you just don't have enough of bishop an attack. Feels, like I just, I can just go rook e eight in the end, queen b six. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we do have things covered, so yeah, we we might actually be able to go to go in here with knight takes e4. I don't think it, at least not very easily refutable. <clears throat> Might mean that you have to play knight e2 here. Takes we take with the rook and black goes, I don't know. Bishop b2, rook b1 doesn't look great, just to note it once and not return to it again. So we have to... Oh, Peter's gone. Has Peter gone? Peter might have gone. Uh, I will get confirmation from our producer. Okay, Peter is uh, slightly gone for the minute, which means uh, you've got uh, you've got me. So uh, we'll just go to go to the position. Uh, the problem we've got is I can't control the board for the moment, so I might just freestyle um, unless Peter is back. Is Peter back? He's muted. He can't. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, uh, I've back. I've, I've no idea what happened to my Zoom there. It just disappeared off my screen for a second, you're and good, uh, good. will you're now good. will now reappear. There we you're go. Good. You're good. Um. Okay. Yeah, so that. no idea. No idea what that was. It was the um. It was uh, nothing. It was a glitch in the matrix. Mm, it happens. Absolutely, yeah. 
Are you a Matrix fan, by the way? Uh, I mean, uh, I think it's very difficult to find people who don't like the first one. Yeah, I, but uh, have you seen the most recent? Not yet, no. No, me neither. And I'm a bit hesitant because... Yeah, I, I know that feeling, yeah. I, yeah. I know that feeling. Because yeah. it's, it's so, so much, you know, a part of our kind of... Uh, the, 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 our youth and uh, like the, 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 some of the most vivid memories of like the, the, the movies that we liked when we were much younger. When yeah. did it come out, The Matrix, actually? I'm curious. How young were we? 99. Blimey. Holy smokes. Has Peter gone again? Peter might be on and off. There might be some small issues with Peter's connection. Uh, the Matrix came out in 99. That is scary. Because 99 is, if my maths is good, 22, 23 years ago, which means I was a mere youngster. Wow. Uh, and Peter was probably only in his early 20s as well when The Matrix came out. Mm. Uh, Keanu Reeves, can he act? Have we ever had this chat or... Or have you and Gusti, I know you're not much of a, a film guy, especially with the chess going on, but we've got the position we've been analysing. Yeah. Um, very quickly, Keanu Reeves, what about I've always it? been of the opinion that he cannot act. Really? Yeah. That is a very peculiar... That, but even, it, if, even if it's true, he still remains one of the nicest people in the world, apparently. That, that's the what he does and what the way he's... Absolutely. He's one of the most humble, nicest people in the world. That's not even a... a a question it's just his act i thought he did well in the matrix and then and bill and ted's excellent adventures did you ever watch that one you must have seen that the what bill and ted bill and ted's excellent adventures when he was uh do you know bill and ted maybe you don't no, know I, haven't, I haven't actually watched you haven't that. seen bill and ted oh bill and ted is wonderful but apart from those two i saw a film with him in it reasonably recently and i thought my mm. goodness, stick to philanthropy but that that like by, th by this point i think keanu reeves is just sort of much more uh you know the man behind the behind the stories about keanu reeves and he really like if you ever want any kind of feel-good content mm. just sort of look up random keanu reeves stories about him being kind to strangers and like, yeah uh, paying bonuses to the entire set after the movie is out and like doing nice. it very quietly so that the story comes out like 15 years later randomly because he doesn't publicize any of it he is just genuinely, I think, a very, very good human being. Absolutely. So, yeah, his, his acting abilities by this point are kind of irrelevant. That, that may very well be true, yeah. That may very well be true. Bishop E592, meanwhile, is on the board. So they're playing accurate, decent chess, as mm -hmm. you would expect. Um, again, this has all been kind of glossed over by us and... You know, we, we, we got there earlier. I quite like yeah. the idea. There might be even cleaner solutions, but of the things we've discussed, I very much like not giving up on the C file unless absolutely yeah. forced. And I don't quite see what will force me to give up on the C file here. I very much would prefer to play Rook FC8 over pretty much any other choice, I think. Maybe B7, B5, but it looks kind of weak. And also, I really don't feel like, why are we allowing B3? And once again, we might have to give up on the C file. The way you lose here with Black if you, is if you allow something like this and your position starts kind of crumbling. Uh, and uh, yeah, keeping keeping control over the one open file here does feel like a very good start as to how you don't allow it. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, but this is still very much a game. Yeah, we at some point there was a worry that it might become some kind of a technical, technical defense by by Dmitri, which he will know how to approach, and it might not be very interesting. This might still end in a draw. I think it's very likely that the position is very much within the margins, so to speak. But it's it's a game. You can you can definitely imagine how white can become better. There's also some outcomes in which black could maybe start fighting for an advantage, but those are. Less obvious, I would say. Absolutely agreed. Uh, 
what's chat saying? Chat is saying, oh, we, yeah, I've opened a can of worms here. Um, yeah, look anybody at that did chess and acting of any serious level, let's say, because uh, we know chess and musicians. Yeah. I mean, lots, no chess and artists. Yeah, lots, lots of them, lots of them play, but whether any of them play to, uh, yeah, Hikaru, Hikaru got a walk-in part, I think, in the Billions in season. Yes, he did. Season he did. five, I think, and he was also. <laughs> okay, that that probably is not entirely true. But uh, the, the way I was going to be finish that sentence is probably not entirely true. Uh, you, you you get a lot of pictures of uh, you know Hollywood people playing chess on uh, on sets during breaks, but whether yeah I think I, I think what I've what I've seen is yeah Humphrey Bogart gets mentioned as somebody who would play quite a bit. Um, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, am I entirely mad? Like I want Marlon Brando? Did he did he play on set? I'm not sure. I'm, What's his I'm, name? Is I'm wondering. A... Like, am I am I hallucinating stories about Sultan Khan becoming an actor at the later part of his career? Oh, could have been, yeah. No, uh, let me let me ask you because I, I have a feeling that at some point he went to the states and Stanley Kubrick. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, used to play in between scenes, didn't he? Hmm. Late life. Apparently not. No, I think I. I don't know where I got this from because, like, Wikipedia completely and utterly fails to mention any of that, so it's probably not true. Marcel Duchamp, but yeah, but he's not. He's not a movie person necessarily, right? No, he, he was an artist. Yeah. He was an artist. Hmm. As far as I can remember. Kubrick and Malcolm McDowell played a bunch of chess while do, while doing clockwork. That's what it, that's what I heard. Yeah, they played a bunch of chess between. Yeah, but once again, we don't, we don't actually know. That's just people playing chess. That doesn't really it says nothing right. about the level of chess that they were playing. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I would be curious to know if there was sort of an FM or IM that was also a successful actor, even if it was theater or. Uh, just domestically rather than Hollywood. I, I would be curious because I, I, I can't think of a name. Um, Rook FCA on the board. So we're expecting... Uh, what are we expecting? Oh, Peter's gone again. Um, should we take a... Do we, do we, do we, Peter's muted, uh, and you see... I have no idea. Like, Zoom just blinks out for 10 seconds without any of the other internet things dying. That's have, so weird. I have never seen this happen before. It's just Zoom disappearing and then reappearing without Twitch or YouTube or anything dying as well. It's really, really strange. Okay. Well... Uh, apparently Bogart was 1800 that's that's pretty good actually that's, that's pretty exceptionally good. good especially considering the the elo system was not invented yet so whoever says this is basing this on just wanting it to adjust to to, to, to assign a number to something that <laughs> was not a number yet so that's funny it's just um, that is funny um so, okay, Rook C4 played. We will get Rook C4. DC4 is not... I don't think you play DC4. Yeah, I, I was going to say it's just completely impossible that he ever does this, but it's actually not as bad as I suspected because the B2 pawn now is actually hanging. You might have to play Queen C2 because Queen there C2 are no B4. particularly active squares. And you can play something like Queen B6 here, right, with the idea of following it up with Queen B3 and just try, try to create as much pressure against the B2 pawn as you can. But with the king on f7 being as unsafe as it is, like my feeling is something like this happens, and then you figure out that in order to continue pushing against this setup, you need to move the knight away from f6, and then you kind of get mated. The moment it 
leaves those squares, you allow some kind of queen d7 check and you just lose. So I think. Oh, wow. We've got some uh, we've got some serious issues. Uh, perhaps what we should do, let me just check with the. Yeah, but you always um, take anyway. Yeah. We, should we take a very quick break to get you restarted? Because you you chimed out again there. Mm. We could do that? that. Yeah, we could do that and uh, see if. Or, or or not. I mean, I'll I'll leave it up to the producer. I don't mind, of course, winging it if you do. Um. Yeah, Zoram says someone tell Peter he can't stream cricket and Zoom at the same time. This may have been. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't wasn't actually that, but it's generally very sound advice, Zoram, and I appreciate you. You're streaming a, cricket, eh? A. Hey. Uh, what happened actually in the cricket? Did we? Did we? Oh, there wasn't we winning. No, nope, he's gone again. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, Peter is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You are looking how it can be the most painful. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. When I saw her for the first time, it was love at first sight. I love how rich and complex she is, how sharp and principled her first steps, how graceful her movement. Paris is a city of love. I've come to find my love for the French defense.
E5, it's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against one E4, based on one E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique move trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshal Gambit against the Spanish, with three Knight F6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there, Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5, Patsers. Hi everyone, welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach, and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the you know, his non-chess team. So I see some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand, and we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you again about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. Welcome back. Hello, welcome back. Let Peter finish his protein bar. He needs all the protein he can get. This is the finals of the Belgrade Grand Prix. We are deep into the second game of today's final. If this ends in a draw, there will be a playoff tomorrow. But we are not, even though the position is balanced, we are far away from a draw. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. been... It's been an interesting game so it's far. It's been an interesting game and it could become much sharper right now. I think yeah. we're at a very important crossroads here because mm. there's basically a 2 a 4 and then Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Why didn't I see that before? Oh, uh-oh. It'll be one here. You get the feeling it will all uh, equalize itself out. Like you can play knight e4 with ideas of perhaps queen d2 and uh, uh, I'm getting alarming messages on my screen again. And once again, apologies for all the tech issues that we've been encountering. I'm hoping I'm not uh, going to disconnect again. But uh, f4 is a very interesting option here, trying to get to play knight d4. If the bishop doesn't take on b2 and goes anywhere back, I think black is legitimately in a lot of trouble after something like this because the pawn on the six becomes a, very much a target. So you are very much supposed to take on... Uh, b2 and after rook b1 you will have to uh, probably go for this endgame and this endgame is very very sharp as is often the case I think the the machine will just equalize it by making a number of precise moves I think it starts by playing king e8 which is a an indication of how un uneasy all of this is because e6 is already go going to be hanging and black also probably needs to sidestep away from the g7 pawn just to make mm -hmm. sure that knight g4 takes e6 is not a check i think this is the point of playing king e8 in this position to make sure that if the knight lands on e6 it doesn't land there with a check so let's say after knight d4 we can play bishop c5 and bishop takes e3 check and launch uh, our own counterplay here against the white king i haven't really looked at this properly but i did see some lines on my screen while i was trying to figure out why my connection is dying every 10 seconds uh, but yeah, a very, very big, big decision here for Richard because uh, he is completely safe. He is never going to be worse if he plays something like Rook B1. People in chat are also asking about B4, but 
before is just not a move that you want to make in these types of structures. It uh, makes it very difficult to challenge the rook on c4 and just gives black more control over the dark squares. Uh, the only way you could maybe justify it is if you play b4 and then f4 and knight d4. But I get, I get the feeling that black should be able to find a way here to reply to this move in such a way that f4, knight d4 doesn't happen. Uh, as for this endgame, people are asking what happens if instead of king e8 you play bishop e7. If you play bishop e7 after knight d4, there is just no comfortable way to deal with the threat towards the e6 pawn. You might be in a very, very large amount of trouble here with black because the best you can, like, you can give a couple of checks, but after king of three, the checks run out and bishop takes e6 will come in. Oh, actually, sorry, rook c2, knight takes e2 is not bad. Which we yeah, I actually missed that as well. Yeah, which you probably should have noticed at some point. But even if you decline to pick up a whole rook and just take on a six next move, you're still doing very very well because this construction will start yeah. crumbling with the knight coming to f five later. It's just very very dangerous for black. How, how does black uh, actually? He's gone before. Interesting. He's gone before. Hmm. And That's I think. Quite... Go on. No, because all of these lines, uh, you know, just visually look so awful. Mm. For I black think he actually is connecting it with the idea of playing a four. Oh, you think he wants to go b4, f4 like this? Yeah. But I, I think you can play something like queen a4, and after this, there is this counterplay now that you have to contend with. And. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's still fine after before, but you are putting your position at least under some potential pressure. Like this could backfire. Uh, this, could this, could, this could this could provide if you don't have an immediate good reply to Queen A4. I, th I suspect you can still sort of bail out by just uh, trading away the Bishop on E5, and then you want to play Rook E1. But even here, let's say I go Queen C2. Although you, you do have some play now. You do have some play. Yeah, but I, I think he will probably have to uh, take some kind of an option like this because this position I no longer really like at all for white. Yeah. I think this might be this might be very, very dangerous. Uh, because now your entire structure is kind of creaking. And if the queens come off, if, if, if queen c2 lands and you have to trade, then all of these guys all of these guys will become weak and you will have to work very hard to, to stabilize. And I'm not even sure it's possible. Um, and uh, f5, e5, bishop g2, uh, e5, e4 is also not something that gives white anything at all. Like you've mm -hmm. more or less completely ruined your position in the space of four moves here, trying to open something up in the king side. Uh, this is an interesting uh, interesting turnaround because, yeah, if, if you wanted to make a restrained move, it, it's something like rook b1 here or the immediate knight f4 uh, was also completely fine. And if you wanted a sharp position, I thought it was this. It wasn't b4, but yeah, b4, queen a4 on the board. And uh, also while we were, well, you know, while uh, you, the viewers, were subjected to the the spectacle of me blinking in and out of existence. The glitch in the matrix. Yeah, uh, the cloak situation equalized itself out because yeah, Richard, uh, Richard, yeah, sorry, I've, I've done Richard, that. Yeah. Richard was doing very comfortably well on the clock with uh, Andre King, I think, being behind by about 15 minutes, uh, which might be relevant. This is becoming a sharp position, uh, but now they have almost equal uh, on the clock again. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious w w why uh, Richie thought this was a good try because you kind of need a follow up here. You, you you can't possibly allow all of this. It's very weird that he played this to me because the other lines with f4 bishop to rook b1 look so risk free as well for white. Yeah, I, it, yeah. I thought I thought that was a very good option. Yeah. Yeah. Like some position like this, and we go. Even even here, let's say if you play ninety four and ninety six and yeah, one, you will always have some kind of a perpetual there. Of course, and it just looks winning uh, uh, visually. I mean, this just looks winning for white. Let me actually check to uh, what what our engine says. 
What after bishop a3? Rugby yeah, it says king e8, and if knight d4, it says uh, bishop c1, which actually is yeah. the same position, right? So, so this is apparently yeah, a draw. Why is this a draw? After king because you can play g6. Okay, good luck. Plus loses instantly to the threat of bishop f5, g6 mate. But he can luck. play g7, g6, stopping bishop f5. And yes, white has the immediate draw with like just, just a repetition of knight g7, uh, knight e6. I will eventually get those arrows to represent what they should be representing. But you don't have anything stronger because black also has the, the, their own trumps here. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Do you ever that. get there though? I mean, do you ever get to this? Uh, By the process of like you, you, you just eliminate. Uh, you just eliminate all the other stuff that doesn't work. Like you, you get to this position and you realize that if you allow bishop five, you just get mated on this square. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, is there a way to stop bishop five? And I think you do find g six. But yeah, it's it was going to be very, very uh, tricky for black and also. Uh, involves zero risk for white. Whereas here, uh, after queen a4, yeah, it does feel like you, you you need to start playing very precisely. And I will switch the engine off in a second. But yeah, the move that Richie made is strictly the only move in this position because you need to give your queen on d3 some squares. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, the square on e3 is hugely important so that queen c2 no longer actually forces the queens off. Uh, because the end, yeah, games now, the end games now are just very unattractive for white with this structure change agreed yeah black is still so, it's still fine for black right mm. yeah but yeah this in, specifically in connection with knight of four i can sort of understand even though i still am not entirely sure why like if you wanted to play knight of four why do you not choose this and you choose this instead yeah that's Hmm. Is there a chance he overlooked Queen A4? I wouldn't no. think so. I wouldn't think so. Because that's a strange one, huh? To uh... why is Knight A4 so important over Knight D4? That's a legitimate question by by Ran. I think the the, the, the issue is uh, you need to have Queen B6 here. Mm. The very very important difference is in this position. Uh, compared to uh, compared to this position, Queen e4 doesn't actually force the queens off, and actually a allows you to create very significant threats against the black queen side. Whereas here, uh, you will have to play an endgame where black has full control over the one open file, and you will not really enjoy that endgame very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, takes, nice. takes, 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 played. Quincy two, I suspect Queen C2 is just a mistake here. I think you should probably play, play something more restrained, like maybe Queen C6. And on... Uh, hmm. And rookie one, rookie four. Why is GF so... Uh, G takes a four so bad? For, for the same reasons as I've just described. You really, really need to be able not to trade queens in this position. You, you will... White is probably losing this endgame, just straight up losing this endgame with, with, the, with the black rooks, rook, rook so active and the white rook so completely horrible. You absolutely need to have queen e3 here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Uh... So queen, let's say queen c6, rook e1 is the idea to play rook e4. I think we could just go rook e4. Oh, sorry, yeah, not rook d4, of course. You just play rook e4. Mm -hmm. If the rooks come off, black is completely fine. In fact, once again, you start feeling that maybe black can become a bit better because there is, you know, uh, it's been drummed into all of us that queen, queen and knight is better than queen and bishop. This obviously is very, very contingent on other factors, but queen and knight in general is a good combo and... Yeah, with, with, without the rooks on, the black king on f7 is very safe. So mm -hmm. I guess you play something like rook d1 and then... Um, but yeah, I, I'd be a bit worried because once again, maybe black has ways of, you know, increasing the likelihood of the queens coming off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, queen 6 played. We'll see. We're going to see something similar. We'll see what... Uh, do you think Richard, uh, Ricard, sorry, I, I really got to snap out of this because I see his name on the screen. Mm, yeah, it's a... And my uh, instinct says, uh, so do you think Ricard is now in, I really need to find a way to bail uh, here? Or do you think he's concerned 
about his position? A little bit, but I don't know. I don't know if he is very concerned. And also, I wanted to point out something because I I thought it was impossible, but it's actually maybe a relevant thing. Mm-hmm. Go rookie one here. I think Black can actually play rook c1 because I I stopped I, would... I stopped after bishop takes e6. Yeah. Queen e6, rook c1, but I can actually play king e7 here. Yeah. Which I think wins a piece. That's amazing. As far as I can, as far as I can see, because that's so awesome. very cute. Discover checks run into the fact that this is also a check. A check. Yeah, and if you protect the rook on e1, I I actually have enough attackers to to pick up the bishop on e6. So black has the immediate a uh, way to get the rooks off the board once again maybe this is not so much maybe uh i can play something like i don't know queen e3 queen e3, queen takes e1 and you know after all why does have the absolutely ideal pawn structure for this bishop on h3 uh with all of uh white's pawns being on the dark squares leaving bishop full sort of operational freedom to go uh, wherever it's needed, but I would still be a bit worried. Like knight e4 followed by queen c3. Hate this position for what? Yeah, like if the queens come off, no, you start sorry. feeling really, really horrible because you get the, the the very, very strong feeling that the queen side is just not going to survive. No. Yeah. Well, it just doesn't survive, does it? Yeah, I mean, I've maybe something like bishop f1 preserves. E5. Time being, yeah, and, and bishop d3 exactly. Like I want to stop knight b1. Here. Ah, you want to just. And maybe, and maybe we're okay. Maybe in, in, in actual fact, this is not so bad. But yeah. yeah, it's it's even here, let's say something like this happens and you're sitting there trying to figure out if you should give up on a three or if you should play this pawn ending, which might be completely lost. Uh, so yeah, it's just all of these things are um, at least mildly worrying. Not, not mildly worrying. In at, my at, at the very least... I think mildly worrying is a massive understatement. Feels uh, feels horrible for uh, for White. Um, here is the uh, knockout bracket. While Peter, unfortunately, uh, is uh, suffering with a few connection or Zoom issues today. Uh, Dmitry Andrekin, of course, defeating Anish Giri in that very unlikely victory in the semi-finals after being under the cosh for most of well in fact both games Anish had wonderful positions and Rapport uh doing the business against MBL and Peter yeah I'm I'm uh, I'm becoming hands in the air in frustration progressively but sorry Peter it's it's happened Apologies for this because, as as I mentioned earlier, like nothing apart from the Zoom call malfunctions at any point. At any point, like everything else works perfectly. I I have all the other windows running smoothly, and I've closed everything I could have closed. And it's still there is a reason the stock is down seventy percent from all time highs. Yeah. 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 Um. So, uh, shout out to everybody in chat as well, who is, uh, you know, chat's being very, very, very uh, interactive today with us. Thank you very much. Uh, where is Yanya? He's commentating on the German Pog Champs or version of. Uh, he is back tomorrow if required, if this does end in a draw. Which, to be honest, I'm leaning. I mean, it might still be the favorite, the favorite result. I don't really know, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer really very confident about any, any making any prognostications on this position. It, it, it feels like we're not really fully in control of what's happening here. And uh, also, they do have fifteen for fifteen in a position with only three pieces left, but a position that I think might require some very intricate maneuvering. Absolutely. Mm. I tell you what, I wouldn't take white here in a game. That that much I do know. Yeah, but. I think I think it's uh, uh, it's uh, reasonably clear that white is not really fighting for 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 any kind of an advantage here. One way to improve this for white, like if if black completely ignores it, let's say we make some kind of a like it's a stupid move, disregard the move. Yeah. But yeah. This this structure change is very much in white's favor because it opens up some files for us takes some additional things under control mm-hmm. but obviously uh most 
sensible moves in this position for black will probably be also uh, just perhaps even accidentally also kind of preventing a four or five because like if you play rookie four white doesn't have time for it if you play I don't know queen d6 f5 will be very well met by five and importantly uh, white isn't really even intending I think let alone threatening to play rookie one because you don't really want to allow rookie four rook takes e1 Yeah, that's Peter mid. That's Peter's mid explanation face. Um, he's probably going to come back in straight away. Let's just quickly have a look at the standings while we get that sorted. Uh, as we've discussed many times, if you've just joined us though, uh, and Drake and Rapport playing, one of these guys will get an extra three points. And as if you want to. Uh, tune in to the beginning of the broadcast. That's when uh, we spoke about the magic number being 17 points. Um, getting that number is going to give you a great shot at getting one of the top two places. Um, of course, if Rapport wins his final 20, I think has been reported to be a 94% favorite, so effectively a lock. Um, so it's all about getting that 17. But we do have a board, uh, a move on the board. Peter, I don't know if you are back. Yeah, I, you never know, right? Like I you never know. You never, you never know. know. I, I am, I am, I am here now. But how, how long it will last is anybody's guess by this point. And my apologies. I, I really have not your fault. It's no not idea fault. what is going on. It's absolutely not your fault. Uh, Ninety-four on the board. Very, very logical move. Now, um, I guess the point is that. F3 is met by rook c3? I think so, yeah. I think we start by rook c3 and then we go from there. Queen e1. I mean, there is queen d4. Ah, queen d4. Is... There is queen d4, and maybe this is one of the, you know, but the, uh, although, why are we forcing the queen to go to e5? But yeah, queen b6 check. Yeah. Also, yeah, actually, that might be very strong. Yeah, queen b6 and then something. King uh, h1, but it's. Three, I, mean, yeah, that's... I think in general. Provoking f3 is probably something that uh, should be quite decent for black for, because it, it gives you uh, those additional Excuse options me. and just kind of weakens your... Uh, feels weak wrong to play f3. Yeah. It feels uh, feels so very, very wrong. Something like rook e1 is probably more... Yeah, rook e1, um, so we play rook c3, queen just d4. Queen d4. Can we take... We can also play rook c1 here, right? So maybe rook c3 is a... You want to take on a three? Taking on a three feels feels very tad greedy. Yeah, like you Oops. you give black a lot of like the, there's there's definitely suddenly a lot of play here for for Richard. Yeah, yeah. I don't I, love it. I don't love it. Yeah, neither neither do I. It feels it feels uh, kind of uh, off topic game. Mm -hmm. um, apart from rookie one, what do we even have here? We don't have that many moves as well. He has That's played a three. He has played a three quite he quickly. He played f three. I'm very surprised at that move. Unless yeah. unless he believes the game is just gonna end rook c three, queen d4, rook c4, queen e3. Mm. Because no, I think he's uh I think he's kind of estimated that he doesn't have anything better. He doesn't want the rooks to come off very easily. Right. Which was very much a threat here. Like rook c three followed by rook c one was very much a threat. So f three rook c three on the board. And yeah, there is now definitely a threat. Of the game disappearing exactly as we've described, this might actually how it ends. I I don't know if there is a comfortable way for Black to improve. You can play Queen D4, Knight of Six, but this still allows nah. a four or five, right? Nah, he never plays Knight F6 here. Never, ever, ever. Apart from the fact Rookie One, sorry, what are you doing against Rookie One? Here? I still have Rookie One, right? It's the same. It's the same tactic. Ah, you still have this. I still you have still this. Have yeah, this. This is very, very crucial, but it still exists. Right? You still, still have this. Of works. course you do. Yeah. Yeah. That's such an important idea, isn't it? Mm. It is a very, very... I just can't see him playing idea. Knight F6. Mm. I just can't see... I can it's see... A... Queen is there any other move? I mean, you can play Queen E1, but... It doesn't look... Queen B6 right. check? I don't know, King H1, I guess. 
rookie three and rook oh yeah rookie in three. somewhere i don't know c1 b1 I think we're losing the thread here. I think we're losing the thread a little bit here. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like we're playing for a win. Knight c three. Yeah, it feels. It feels very, and... very uh, yeah. wrong. And yeah, twenty four rook c four already on the board. Richard does has does have the option of playing queen e five check because queen b six king h one. Uh, we have not really lost this with white yet. Because you're it, saying knight f2 definitely loses. I'm taking, it. right? And I have at least yeah. the potential here. I mean, I, I'm definitely not losing this with white. And there might be mate because this looks very... very yeah, th this might be mate. This is the problem. Yeah, but he he hasn't really spent even very no. much time on this. Queen e3 has been played. And uh, yeah, it looks like the game might be might be disappearing exactly along the lines that we that we suspected. Yeah, rook c3 played by, by Dmitry. Uh, I'll just... Briefly, because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. My apologies once again for for everything that happened with my connection today. So I'm don't really trust my my brain very much. Queen five was playable. You can play knight two here as black, and apparently a four f five still equalizes. But uh, very very obvious why he didn't want to engage with this. Like if 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 you miscalculate something here, you will yeah. be very very sorry. And apart from a five, like rook f two, you have already lost the game because yeah, rook c one. Followed by knight c4, you're just not coming back from this. Uh, so yeah, Gross. very very understandable that Richard wants none of that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we now have, I think, uh, two repetitions. And uh, Dmitri, number two. Dmitri is considering not playing rook c4 in this position. He by basically by this point he knows he has a draw with rook c4. He is not expecting queen e5 anymore, uh, and he is a. Uh, uh, he is uh, asking asking himself if he maybe should be playing for a win. Knight of six is actually playable here, um, and uh, yeah, White has perhaps to be slightly careful. But interestingly, with the knight with the, with the e four square taken away from the knight, the engine suggests we can actually afford to offer this trade. And then after bishop f one, let's say queen takes a three, queen b six provides white with enough counterplay here not to worry too much uh which makes sense but you know he he might be interested but you get the feeling that he not unreasonably i'm um, talking about Mitch and draken here rates himself as a very very capable uh rapid player and sort of not gambling here in a position where it doesn't really feel like he is necessarily much better and just shifting uh shifting the entire final to tomorrow might be yeah I, I don't see him playing anything else but rook c4 here to be honest i really don't i really don't yeah rook c4 played so i think i think we are uh extremely likely to to see the game disappear within the next like half a minute or so because they will also hit move 30 but after i think uh, Richard can't. It's already three times, isn't it? I don't think he can claim yet. Or maybe he can, yeah. Maybe he can, yeah. R one, two, and yeah. If he goes queen e3 here, it's a third one. So yeah, I, I, I guess they are now going through the motions of writing down queen d4, e3 on, on the score sheet and then asking for an arbiter. But considering there's only one game in, in the playing hall, the arbiter should be prepared to just come and confirm that this is a threefold. Because really, there is nothing else to watch, and you know they, they should be aware that this is a threefold. So, yes, this is just uh, just the end for today. Today was a livelier game than yesterday, uh, and I don't entirely agree. I think Nashville Chess in the Chess Twenty Four chat said that this has been a very very dull final to watch. I think today was a perfectly fine game, uh, yeah. but yeah, compared, let's say, with the with the semi final that uh, Richie and MVL played. Uh, this has been a kind of a timid affair, uh, but tomorrow will not be. Tomorrow there is, you know, there is nowhere else to to run or hide. You have to you have to play until there is only one standing. That's right. Yeah, and uh, but Queen E three is not yet on the board. So are we being a? Are we? I'm pretty sure they're checking with the arbiter. Uh, okay. I mean, if if he actually goes Queen E five here. That would be like Andre can go in knight of six, I could imagine. Uh, queen, yeah. yeah, Richie playing queen e5 here with the intention, I assume, of playing knight d2 f5 and then, you know, making some kind of a study like draw because white is not playing for a win in those lines. Right. 
let me tell you this much. Uh, so yeah, the, the, I'm, I'm using a computer crutch here, but basically after f5, black can play queen b6 check. Uh, you have to play king h1, knight f1, fe. Uh, let's say after king g8, e7 doesn't really work for whatever reason. I guess knight takes g3 is mate. Yeah, yeah this, this is now mate because rook c1, queen g1. So you have to play queen b8 check, bishop f5 check, g6, bishop g6. And after king takes g6, you still have the perpetual. And you kind of know you have the perpetual. But you also absolutely know that you're not playing this for a win. You're, right. you're trying to make a draw here. So uh, doing this when you can just write down a move on the score sheet and ask the arbiter to confirm seems uh, like a kind of a strange gamble I haven't seen people do very often. Uh, looking at the video feed, he seems to be looking at queen e5. I mean, it's also a free roll for him uh, in a way. Even if... He, even if his position is not better, uh, he knows that at any point he can claim. So there's nothing lost at all by him like spending what, however much time of the, his remaining 11 minutes here calculating queen e5. It still is perfectly okay for him to do that. It's just that it doesn't really look like it should work. Agreed. Um... He's got 10 minutes, so I mean, as uh, I agree with, uh, uh, with, with Peter, I would be absolutely shocked if, uh, if Queen E5 landed on the board. Who do you think is favourite then in the Rapids if it does go to Rapid, Peter? I mean, on paper, clearly, Rick, Ricard is... Favorite, but who, yeah, I, I think you recent form and everything else. Who, who yeah, I think you have to take Richard, but yeah, and Draken has already, uh, you know, in his yesterday's uh, tie break, he that wasn't the, the the best he's ever played by a long stretch. He was in a lot of trouble with the white pieces and then uh, basically lost with the black pieces. Mm -hmm. But he also demonstrated what makes him such a dangerous uh, opponent in those formats because. He is extremely resourceful. He is very, very unflustered, even if things kind of go badly and many people will maybe start tilting and uh, stop really looking for best resources. Uh, he never, pretty much never does that. He continues mm -hmm. fighting. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, you know, asked to calculate, he calculates fast and cleanly and takes his chances. I think it will be very, very close. But I think if I had to, if I had to name a name a favorite, I'd probably be taking Richie. But very, very sort of advisedly, I I don't think it will be a a, a cakewalk by by any means. I think, but once again, I think a lot of people underrate just how good Andrekin is at sort of chess in general, but in particular at, at shorter time control chess. He is mm -hmm. very, very slippery. Yes, he is. Uh, still no move. So yeah, that 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 is interesting. I, it, is, it is very interesting. Yeah. Wow. I would if he went for queen e five here. I would be really very very shocked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, yeah. But that's a. Uh... That's a decision left in the game. I still don't think it'll happen, but you know, no. if anyone if anyone is capable here of just saying no, let's continue playing chess, I think uh Richie is, is definitely one of those people. He's not the only one, but he's definitely one of those people who might actually uh take a punt here on Queen E five. But it looks insane. Like it just looks just amazing. starting to calculate this line. Like you, you have to play a five here or basically resign. And Black has sort of any number of things here which never lose and might win it it just looks absolutely mental to to even consider like i'm, I'm sorry are you even yeah you are worse if you go ef my big question was like if even if black let's say if black is also completely fine after ef you just never ever entertain this idea because like there's no upside and very very strong potential downside but you are mm -hmm. you are better here after rook e1 or rook d1 so there is at least some lines where black can go wrong but both queen b6 check, and actually even knight takes f1, fe, uh, king e7, king d6 uh, is uh, is also apparently a draw because black always has the perpetual there. Uh, the e-pawn does get quite far, but black 
launches enough counter counter play on the other side of the board to not lose. Yeah, very curious. I really did expect uh, for the, the, the game will disappear post haste here, but it's still it's still there, and he's still it's still there. Yeah, I, I think he's very seriously considering it by this point. I don't think like I've done this myself, and I think in pretty much every single case I uh, ended up taking the threefold. And there's like a, a bit of a cutoff in your head where you say like you kind of say to yourself, okay, I've I've pretended for long enough. People will no longer blame me for not considering to continue con considering the the option of not agreeing a draw here, and you know, like I'm, I've I've proven myself uh, to to myself that I'm not chicken, and it's time to actually you know kind of return to my chicken ways and take the draw. And I think he is very comfortably past that threshold by this point. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah. I think if he like if he continues thinking here, he is very seriously uh, trying to make queen e five work. Shocking. Yeah. Shocking. Uh, Jan writing off Andreikin. Andreikin beating Giri. We love to see it. So did Jan? Jan was that, fair. That, that did not actually happen. No. No. Okay, that that's just happen. fake news, is it? That did not that's happen. Okay. We got some fake news, fully expected. Um, in Blitz, Andrekin is maybe a very huge favorite. Absolutely not true. No, I don't think so. You can't be huge favorite. So. No, no, you can't. You can't be huge favorite. You can have a great chance, but yeah, okay. Andrekin has, uh, you know, beaten Magnus and probably beaten everybody in the world at Blitz. He's a fantastic Blitz player, but he can't be huge favorite against. Rapport, who's twenty seven seventy. So, R Ricard yeah, has played let me actually, plenty. Of let me actually check. Uh, yeah, obviously those ratings aren't very representative, but uh, yeah, Andreikin is uh, number eighteen in the world in in Blitz, and Richard apparently is not on the list, meaning he is not twenty seven hundred. But that probably just means that he hasn't played enough Blitz recently, and in Rapid. Rapport is number five in the world, and Andrekin is not on the list. So, yeah, it's just not not a narrative yeah, just, that I support. I I very not. much think that it's it's a lot to do with the fact that there just aren't aren't enough high profile rapid and blitz tournaments that get rated. And uh, if we had more of them, and if we had a kind of a stable rating system, which wasn't as as you know wildly fluctuating as we as we have right now, both of them would be you know very very safely uh 2700 plus players but yeah uh, nobody's a huge favorite and definitely nobody's a huge favorite against uh, against richie um but it's Correct. but it's going to be very close he's left himself three minutes and yeah he's also how long how long is uh, how many moves are left here 10 three minutes no i just I just don't see it happening. Uh, I really don't. Uh, John Rambo says, Lawrence, you've kidnapped Ran Yang because you always wanted to take his place. Um, no, I've not kidnapped Yang. Yang is busy elsewhere. Uh, but uh, I'm glad to be sitting in for Yang. Uh, Yang will be back tomorrow, assuming this game ends in a draw. I think he's still a big favorite. Uh, uh, the favorite result. And uh, Rickard's still thinking. He spent ten minutes forty-five now on this move. Peter is 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 with us. Don't worry, he's here. He's just yeah. Um, um he's currently uh, putting in a, a market order to short uh, to short uh, Zoom uh, on the open on Monday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so as I was yeah. saying, like I don't know if if that part of my pointless tirade got cut off but like uh, from a certain point onwards it just becomes absolutely foolhardy to continue because you haven't left yourself enough time to adjust to you yeah, exactly yeah there's exactly. like if, if you leave if, if you leave yourself a minute here and make a move that is not arbiter here's my queen e3 can you please stop the clocks basically even playing queen e3 here is a little bit foolhardy because it allows black to play knight f6 or something and the game might continue but that is not such a huge risk 
But like legitimately playing queen e5 or queen b2 here, leaving yourself a minute, even with a 30 second increment, is very much asking for trouble and uh, would be would be a remarkable, be remarkable decision. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, it's just not a practice. Even if it's okay, it's not a decent practical decision, and it's not a, it's not really a, a professional decision. This is not a professional decision. Yeah. Given the stakes. Given Whoa. No way, dude. Okay. No I, I mean, way. I, I am very happy about this, but also, what the hell? I'm shocked. I am absolutely gobsmacked that he played this move. This for me is just. It's, it's yeah, an this is, uh, this is incredibly impressive to me. Incredibly impressive because, uh, as we've just established, like he's, he's not a poor rapid player. It's not like, you know, the, perhaps the, like the, most, uh, the most famous example of something along these lines was game 12 of the Sofia match between uh, Veselin and, and Vichy. Uh, where Veselin just went absolutely all in with the white yeah. pieces, thinking that if he draws that game and it's 6-6, six, six, he just stands very, very little chance in the rapid portion. So he felt that his EV was actually higher if he goes for something which he absolutely knew was extremely risky and might backfire, uh, just to give himself the best chance of uh, beating Vichy in the classical time control. But he's just not a dog in the, in the rapid tomorrow. It's just a... Uh, so... It's it's very very remarkable that he does this. It feels just like an obscene decision to me. Um, no words. Yeah. So how does it go? So knight d two. Yeah. Also, somewhat sadly for that entire storyline, you can actually play knight of six, and then give a check from b six, force king h one, and play rook c six. Mm -hmm. And, and then five, we just have a position. F five looks like a threatening move, but you can actually, and this is an interesting thing that uh, I think would be instructive for our viewers. Uh, just how well blockades like this compensate for? Like it looks perhaps to people who are not very experienced with these types of positions, it might look like white might just be winning straight up. When, in, as a matter of fact, the engine says black is not even remotely worse. Uh, because of how strong the king on e7 is, how weakened the king on h1 is now that we've played f2, f3. The bishop on h3 is very much restricted by your own pawn on e6. And if you go into this endgame, if anyone is worse here, it is white because of just how strong okay. the rook on the open file is. Mm -hmm. uh, so black does have a bailout here. If you don't want to engage with the madness that is 92 f5, you can actually play knight f6. And apparently he hasn't left himself... Okay, these are very, very strange clock, clock situations. Yeah. Oh, okay. If we. Oh no, it's not. Uh, sorry, I've, I've, no, I've lost my mind. It's, it's the right, it's the right clock. So, uh, Richard left himself two minutes here against currently eight and a half one Drake in. Uh, ten moves to go for Richard and eleven moves to go here for Andrake in. Mm. He still has choices, as I've, as I've just pointed out. I thought ninety two was the only move, but you can actually. Uh, allow rookie one here and then just protect the pawn e6 like this even though you will need to be prepared to give up the pawn on e7 on e6 here uh if if uh queen e7 is potentially just lost or at least very very dangerous so you you, you don't want to be or, or even bishop takes a five simply is this is not something you want to be doing with black no uh but yeah allowing a fee is uh, is very playable. But yeah, he has played knight g2. Uh, Richard instantly replies with f5. So, I mean, very, very clearly, he uh, spent the entirety of those, like, he spent 10 minutes, 12 minutes on queen e5. 12 out of 14 minutes to play queen e5 and not claim a draw there. I am very impressed. I am very, very impressed by this. It's, Is there I, any I, way for black to go horribly wrong in this line that we were looking at before? So knight f1... Uh, depends depends on which one you choose. I think the safest one and the one you kind of really never ever lose is to start with queen b6 check. Uh, king yeah. probably loses. It's a, at least it's a problem for for white. So you go king h1 and now you take an <coughs> and uh, it's a really mad position because queen b8 is the draw I showed followed by bishop f5 and then uh, bishop takes g6. Uh, but there is also 
somewhat shockingly. You can just go bishop h3 f5 here and you're still... What is this move? Sorry? Well, you need the king to be able to get to g4. Like, you need to be able to go hg in this position and not... And if queen f2? What... Ah, I'm getting made it with queen b8 in one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, we're also, and we're also creating a threat of queen b8, taking away the h7 square. So black needs to make an immediate draw, and there is an immediate draw here. You can still go yeah. in here, and black has the perpetual from the d1, h1 squares. Oh, my God. Yeah, although, That's yeah, mental. You're, you're still not losing. Even it. here, bishop h3, right? Yeah. yeah. This actually potentially loses for white, so you need to accept the, the, the draw. But yeah, but this is the mad part about the whole thing, is that it seems like, yes, black needs to... Like, the difficult part about this whole calculation is to recognize that in this position you are threatening to go 9g3, queen, rook c1, and queen g1 mate. But you can probably do that, because you, you definitely in this position consider including queen b6 check. It's a very logical thing to do, pushing the king mm -hmm. in the corner. It mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get here, and you ask yourself... Uh, Why? <laughs> so I, th 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 does white have a threat, and do, do, do we have a threat as black here? And you realize that uh, you can actually play king g8. And yeah, it just doesn't feel like this is a winning attempt. It's... it's no. just... I'm very impressed. And I also, like, uh, not if one played immediately by and Drake. And this is a, this I thought was a tricky line because now if you go king e8, queen takes g7, you might be worse. Uh, so you have to wow. play g7. And king g8 does, uh, and oh, yeah, he played king e8, yeah. And king g8 probably just loses to e7 now because we can take on f1 and go king e2. They went king e8. Okay. Went king e8. So he is now actually worse after queen takes g7. Really? Yeah. I'll 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 switch the engine off because I think it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's let's pol pollutes our thinking. But so uh, queen g7 threatens mate. Yeah, it does basically it? threatens mate, and after queen yeah, it does. check, I assume we can still. take... I think this is the issue. We can still take. I guess. Wow! If you can take here, that's never, this is never mate. This basically always gets here, and black can, does Over. not have a check, which connects the rook on c2. Yeah. Richard. Wow, what a guy, huh? This is this is kind of godlike. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is sick. If he if he understood that the likelihood of Andre can play knight six f one before queen b six was high, and he was risking nothing anyway, this is an unbelievable decision. This is unbelievable. I mean, I mean, the, yeah. I, I wonder if uh, the unnamed people who weren't very impressed with the semi-final are still unimpressed. <laughs> like, this is stunning. This is absolutely stunning levels of you know. And once again, we're we're, we're, we're being very results oriented here. But like currently, it stands as this is stunning levels of bravery. Uh, you know, pure under under different circumstances, you could be using different nouns there instead of bravery. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, some some different some different definitions could have been could have been used for what Richard has done. Because yeah, this this seems absolutely mad to me. And now and now, sorry, so what what is what? How does uh, black stay on the board here? I guess we go like I don't know Queen C seven or something, but you are kind of in trouble. Just very simply, just take and take the knight. Take yeah. and the bishop, and yeah, this looks bad-ish because uh, horrible-ish. Yeah, white king is now safe, and you always right. have like, you always have the perpetual in your back pocket, and you're probably pushing for more. Very likely pushing for more. No, this is just uh, this is just bad. There's just nothing, right? Yeah. I mean, I have a thousand pawns. Ah, interesting, interesting thing that yeah, I, I after after promising I will not cheat. I've actually gone gone ahead and cheated. So you, you should play king e seven here, and then in this position you should play this. And take right, right, and and this pawn ending might Whoa. might be a draw. Even though I like, I don't know how comfortable I would be claiming it is definitely a draw because you will have to like this is maybe not the, the way to play it, but like eventually this will be basically this position right you can play f well, i mean once again i'm this is not the right way to do it but 
eventually, uh, if white does it properly, it will be this position, which probably is a draw because you're just not fast enough with the, mm -hmm. with the attack of your... How confident am I in this assessment, though? Like f6, king g6, king e4, king f7, king f5, c3, g6, check, king f8, king e6, c2. Yeah, probably is a draw, but it's still a draw that black needs to make, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, how how certain are you you will make a draw in this end, even if I just take on a6? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, he went queen b6. It looks Remarkable like. game. Absolutely remarkable. He takes f1. Yeah. Yeah, now rook c1, king e2, and it's really over. No, it wasn't this the line where he has zero chance because uh he does he can't get the queen. You can still two. sort of continue. You can go like rook c7, maybe queen c7, something along those lines. You still are sort of alive if you do maybe this. But obviously you're not doing very well. Let's let's put it like this. Like uh so in particular, you can play you can play something like queen g6 check. Uh, covering c2. That's and also covering the c2 square, and then uh, there are some there are some very computerish looking moves here, which look very strong. Queen f7 looks like mate, but it's not. Is your? I think it's not right because I if all else fails, I can go rook e7. Yeah. Although, like, I'm not enjoying any of this, but I'm yeah, queen f4. What's going on? Surviving grimly, right? I'm I'm still not getting mated here. But I can probably just take on h6, for example, here. And the position looks toast. Queen b5 check, king d2, king e1 both look good. Queen c1 check is coming. I play, put my bishop on f5, I go g4, h4, h5, and it looks kind of toast. Um, bad news for Andraken. Um, very, very bad news. Peter, as you can probably tell, has also uh, timed out slightly. I think he'll be back with us in just a minute. He is now uh, doubling down his uh, Zoom short position for uh, for, for Monday's Open. Yeah. Um, yeah. If that, Rickard that... wins, sorry to interrupt, Peter, but yeah. if Rickard wins this classical game, yeah. he actually will leapfrog Giri and Nepomneshi on the live list, he might. Does he gain five points for this game? Pretty much, yeah. He he he's touching he becomes, Wesley. Becomes world number seven. Still is behind Wesley on my screen, but yeah. Yes, he's still behind Wesley. Just yeah. yeah. Peter F. Swidler says Bertie Bird Bird. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, that is very much what's been going on today. The entirety of the the second half of the show. Apologies, I've. Yeah, I, there's only so many times I can say I have no idea what's happening with my Zoom connection today uh, before you stop believing me. And yeah, Andrekin is also down to a minute, which is not going to be very much help. Uh, I'm wondering if there's any point to like luring the king to g3 and then going rook c7 so that we have some checks. But I, I guess the issue is that let's say we kind of do this anyway. And then after queen b5, it turns out it is one check, one check. <laughs> it's not checks it's one check <laughs> so it it still doesn't really whoa he's gone rookie one check what and, is this uh, we we know from the computer evaluation that this is not a perp how easy is it of not a perp okay king um, d1 let's start with the, let's go to the side where we control c3 that's obvious yeah so king d1 let me just play it so don't don't I think it's just it. very easy even you get to like the a2 square oh, hang on he, he gives a check from c4 so we go queen d3 right oh no, queen d3 yeah. you kind of you run out of checks very easily right because you it's don't just have... over yeah queen a3 queen b2 uh queen queen there oh, i just put give a check from this side right king b1 check King uh, there you go. No, no, in A to C4. Ah. This is what was bothering. And then, ah, ah, and then I've even that King B2, Queen E2, King C, King B2. Yeah, king we C go like King C3 and then King D2. King and, D2, and, and then we already, run towards those squares, I guess. Yeah, it has to be. No, there's no check here. Uh, queen A2, sorry, there Queen is, A2. There is, there is there. still we, a check, but yeah, you, yeah, yeah, but we come out this. Know, yeah, now you kind of know it's never going to be enough because it lands on somewhere like a five in the game. Yeah, this is now wow. 37. 
So Richard can very comfortably just repeat for a bit until he gets to move 40 and then calculate it out. Um, it has to be over. Yeah, looks like looks like there will not be uh, a tie break tomorrow unless we're missing something. Yeah. Yeah. Queen Queen uh, Queen D three King C one Queen Queen A three and you can just. Oh, no, this this is obviously like once the king queen the queen gets to B two the game is over so you, you you can't do that at all you have to play Queen E three we go here once again this loses to Queen B two so you give this check. Yeah. Allowing queen b2 is impossible. We give this check. We go king b2. One check available. King c3. A uh, queen e3 check here exists. Oh yeah, yeah. Queen e3. Queen e3 exists here. Okay, so oh, hang on. How do we? King a1. Oh yeah, we go king a1 here. Exactly. Yeah, we go king a1 here, and then the queen cannot return to c4. This is very clever because. Queen f1. F1 is queen f1 might might have been a draw. Like with a, a draw, that's interesting. Yeah. Like if we if we include these moves, this might mm. be a draw. But because because f1 is unavailable, you have to give a check from some any other square, yeah. and it gets to a2, and then we get to play queen b2, and exactly. then and then the game ends. So yeah, this looks like this looks like this is how it will end. You just force the queen to give a check from a square which doesn't connect to c4. And then this happens, and then this happens, and this is unavailable. As we say in Germany, wow. Yes, we were very. <laughs> we were I am shocked, firstly, that Queen E5 landed. Secondly, that it ended so terribly for Dimitri. Um, and just a well calculated move by Rickard. He just understood that he wasn't really risking anything. Yeah. Just calculated it out to perfection. And yeah, thought yeah. that the margin of error for black was strong mm. enough to go for it. Yeah. Shocking. And yeah, this is also very much uh, you know on the topic of of being unafraid of uh, you know taking taking calculated risks and uh, yeah, I personally, I think I wouldn't have been able to make that move. No. I've done, I've done similar things in my like I've I've refused draws against very strong players in very very high stakes situations, but the moves I made to refuse those draws were kind of they didn't look as risky and as insane as this. I think like I have some masters. Master Semeny put a, an interesting question. He said, uh, Lawrence Peter, what would you rate Rickard's chances if the candidates was tomorrow? Assuming, well, we don't know the entire field. That's uh, the issue number one. But I would say that, um, you know, the candidates is always an interesting one because basically everybody is so strong that everybody is capable of, of winning it. And especially this candidates where it doesn't look as though there is a standout guy who's, you know, 40 or 50 points clear ahead of, or 30 points. Yeah. I, th I, I, I don't know. Who, who do you think, Peter? I think, I think he has a very sound chance. I still feel that people who played candidates before, and like specifically, I think Fabi mm -hmm. and uh, uh, to some extent, Jan actually. Who are, yes, yeah. Uh, uh, and by Jan, I mean Jan and not Jan Krzysztof. Uh, because I think, once again, due to nobody ever doing that twice in a row until now, in like with the with the structure of the candidates being what it is, uh, there currently no one has won two candidates in a row. So people, I think, just by using that metric, people are kind of underwriting Jan's chances a little bit because sort of history speaks against him there, um, but. I, I, I still feel that uh, he, he has a decent chance uh, simply because yeah he he still has some prep left from the matches we were discussing with Jan with Gusti and uh, he's just a very strong player who has won it before uh, so I, I think if I had to pick I would pick between him and Fabi uh, but on this form Richard is a very very major threat there very major threat shout out to Ellen Nielsen who says uh, Lawrence, Queen E5 is not going to happen. We'll be unprofessional. Rickard, hold my beer. Hold my beer, yeah. yeah very that's, much. Um, you win 
okay, I resign. Well played, Ellen. Uh, yeah. As I say, it's just uh, it's a move which uh, requires an Im immense amount of self self belief as well. Uh, mm -hmm. It's you know because it can go wrong, and fair enough. Um, yeah, this game is just not going to last longer because there is just no alternative. You just find a way. Yeah, Did you, they reach Ruby Yeah, and they got they got the move for it, so he will he okay. will work it out. Now he played King C one, King uh, Queen. Uh, queen uh, e3. So basically, I think currently the easiest way to actually get there by removing all, all your other options is you do this, you do this, you do this, and now you go king b2 and king a1. Yeah. And uh, sort of step by step, you just land here, queen f1 unavailable, then you play king a2 against any check, and then black cannot stop queen b2 against the next check because the queen cannot come to the c4 square. So yeah, also very sound, I think, choice by, by Richard to not force yourself to calculate all of this stuff on move 39 and 40. Very, very sensible to like, now he can get up and take, take a drink of water or I don't know, go use a bathroom break or whatever, and then return and calm down and just put this to bed. It shouldn't take very long because, as we as we keep on mentioning, this is not a very difficult calculation considering the black in most cases only really has one check you need to calculate at all. So yeah, it's a it's a kind of a absolutely straightforward one line calculation that is, uh, you know, kind of stuff he does in his sleep. But still, lots of lots at stake. So he'll take he'll take a bit of a pause. Yeah. Uh, Zixa says, but if you go to the bathroom, your opponent has to wait for you to come back just to concede. Kind of rude. Yeah, yeah, there is there is a little bit of that, but... Um, you still I, was always, I was always one for, you know, if my opponent disappeared and I was lost. You know what? Just, uh, just stop the clocks, sign his score sheet, off you go. Yeah, the, I mean, it's, it's, it's also a reaction, but... It's been done. You know, it's, been it's, done. it's definitely been done. I don't think it's even that bad. Like if you, if your opponent legitimately disappears for a long, yeah. Time, yeah, yeah, you really aren't supposed to 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 wait until he deigns to come back to the board. And yeah. Stuff. Obviously, if it is like a legitimately, you, you've played a very tough game, and the, this is the first moment for your opponent to get up, you know he's not be aiming you by by going to the restroom. So you you might as well yeah, wait yeah. for two minutes. But if it's somebody who just decided to disappear and just kind of goes for a walk anywhere but the board i don't think many people would blame you for just signing two score sheets and saying yeah done with this bye bye yeah. um, bye bye yeah <laughs> i'm not one for waiting around just sitting at this miserable position after move 40 and yeah it's just there's lots to be doing you know there's cricket or, you know, yeah yeah it's all kinds of great stuff Absolutely. Uh, beating Andraken like this is is astonishing. I agree. I mean, yeah. firstly, the entire concept of the opening was astonishing, and then to, you know, be well, look, it looked as though Andraken was actually not outplaying Ricard, but certainly, you know, it looked as though he got a great position. There was one moment though, wasn't there, where uh, he, um, where did Andraken actually go wrong? Well, the, the big mistake, the one that arguably threw the game for him was uh, the move king e8. King e8, right. But, yeah. that's... but this you can understand, like king e7, yeah. allowing, things like, allowing this with check, you know, the, the fact here is that uh, this yeah. is draw and this isn't. And I think live during the game, you probably suspect that, you know, you'd much rather have a move here with the knight still alive compared to this position in which white can take. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think, I'm a bit like, to me, the shocker, if there was a shocker there, was how little time he spent on the idea of playing queen 6 check first. Because I think he played knight takes f1, he had like 10 minutes at this point, maybe mm -hmm, when, mm -hmm, when queen 5 mm -hmm. landed on the board, I think he had about 10 minutes. And he spent two minutes to play knight takes f1 there. I think that's probably, I mean, it's obviously is connected with some kind of miscalculation. I guess specifically he missed how strong queen takes g7 is because 
I think most people just assume I have this. King h1 legitimately loses to knight to hg3. Uh, and then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. c1, queen g1. And if king takes f1, I'll find something. I have checks. Like I have I have checks with my rook. Like I, there's no way mm -hmm, I, don't, mm -hmm, I don't find mm -hmm. something. And you kind of And then you realize. Yeah, and you kind of stop here and you and you say to yourself, like, I'm fine here. I will I will figure out exactly how fine if we get here. Uh but you still I would expect him to to spend a, a bit of a a bit more of a, or, 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 like spend a bit more time on the idea of including this and then taking on a fun because then you, as I mentioned, you are not even obliged to engage in any of this stuff. You can play King G8 because of how strong this threat is. And white has no winning chances here whatsoever. White needs to be careful, in fact. Mm -hmm. There is at least two, two draws that white has here, but white has no winning chances. Yeah, Amazing. very, very remarkable. Mm. And to what, I mean, objectively wasn't such a fabulous game until that point. But yeah, that, that ending is one of my all-time all -time favorites now. Because yeah, I, I've, I've not seen decisions like playing Queen E5, leaving myself, leaving yourself two minutes very often in, with, in games. You know, th this node bleeds. You know, this much of a nosebleeds game, and you play Queen five with two minutes on the clock. Amazing. Just amazing. Um, Peter, oh. will, uh, Miawi Baba says, Peter, will you likely be a second for somebody during the candidates? Um, Good question. Not as not as things stand, but like you know, there was a question here from Magnus's goat. Uh, is this a simpler? Uh, your line is kind of not what will happen. What will happen is Black will play Queen C4 check, and going forward will get you mated. So you have to go back and uh, restart calculating. So it's kind of the same line, uh, Magnus's goat. It's it it does very very similar things, but I don't I don't I don't know if it does it faster. It doesn't really matter. Like if. Uh, uh, if we get if we get here by move forty four or move forty two or move forty seven, it's it's irrelevant as long as you don't blunder a threefold, and it's very difficult to blunder a threefold here. You have to really faff about for like ten moves to to stumble into a threefold here. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Yeah, no, you can't. You can't make a draw. It's just, yeah, it's re it's really impossible. Um, does well? Does winning in tie breaks mean less points? Uh, nope. No, but there are there aren't going to be any. Although, of course, in Berlin there might be, which starts in about ten days' time. Uh, I actually live a about a seven minute walk. From where they're playing, um, so that'll be interesting. I wasn't actually around for the last tournament. Mm. I have no idea what's going to happen with the actual tournament, though. Which, if you get my drift, as in, who is well? Which uh, Russian players are due to play? Andrekin. Uh, we can look this up. I had yeah, this, I had this graphic somewhere. I'm sure. Yeah, this Fredka. is. Vichikov, Dubov. Yeah, that's right. that sounds about right. And the Pyrene. Now, are they all guaranteed entry to Germany? Are they all down? No, none of this is clear, yeah. And uh, right. well, we've sort of not been discussing it for a number of reasons, but the major reason really isn't even, you, you know, the touchiness of the subject. It's just that nobody really knows. Mm -hmm. They're all guaranteed entry verified, says Satiris. So at least we have, we have this... Uh, uh, we have this uh, statement from, I guess, some some powers that be who know. But yeah, whether they will all make it there is is a different question altogether. Yeah, it's a, it's very much one of those, uh, Mister Monopoly. And um, I guess we'll know more in the next week or so, right? Basically, because they're going to have to. Uh, what's the What's the policy on replacements and that sort of thing? Because nobody knows. I nobody knows. very much hope we with 
you, you know, Richard winning this game basically makes him a more or less a mortal lock to qualify, but mm -hmm. there is still one spot to go and very, very interesting groups. And, you know, the last thing you would want uh, is for for players to, to just be re replaced at the last moment and, and things being thrown into, you know, further further uncertainty. But obviously, you know, there are no guarantees of anything and understandably so. Yeah, King B2 played in the meantime. Yeah, this will, once he starts making moves here, the game ends very, very quickly because Andrekin basically has one sensible check in every single position, which does something and doesn't lose on the spot. Like currently, Queen E2, King, King A1 is immediately game over. So he gives a check from G2. Oops, I'll carry that on. He gives a check from D2. The king goes to B1. C1 is probably also fine. Queen C1 check, King A2. You put the queen on B2, and when Queen C4 check, King A1 comes, and there's no check on F1. Hence why it's winning. Um, here are the standings. Uh, not for much longer. Rapport is going to take this final one and a half half. Uh, what are the tie breaks if Hikaru, Giri, Rapport tie on 20? Yeah, we discussed this yesterday. It's tournament wins and then... Yeah, it's, uh, it's basically number one, tournament wins, number two, second places in uh, in Grand Prix. So it's uh, obviously... But people on 20 points will have either wins or second places. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's tournament wins, uh, tournament runner-ups... And then number of classical points scored in the two legs that you played, and then number of classical wins achieved in the two tournaments that you played, including I'm guessing both the pools, and uh, and the playoffs. And this is the one beat where uh, Richard winning today and not tomorrow might become relevant. But he is so safe on twenty that I'm really not expecting the number of wins and the number of points to become. Uh, an issue for him. I think he just qualifies through winning a winning one of the one of the legs, uh, because I think the tie that we found yesterday, if I remember correctly, was let's say uh, Anish. Uh, yeah, you found one combination, didn't you? Yeah, one of potentially two, like Anish winning the uh, the bottom half, winning Group uh, D, then beating MVL, let's say in the semis, uh, getting to play Livon in the finals and beating Livon. This gets Anish 7 plus 13 to 20. And it also gets uh, uh, Livon, Livon. To, to, to 20 with 10 plus 10. But then uh, Livon just is instantly eliminated because he won zero legs. And he is tying with two people who both won a leg of the Grand Prix. So it's very, very... The first tiebreak is immediately enough because Anish will have won Berlin 2 and uh, Richard won Belgrade and Levon's two finals will actually not be enough, which is kind of heartbreaking, but also somewhat understandable. Uh, question, Ding Liren. Now, I'm not so up to date with what's going on uh, with Ding. So is he not playing just because it's impossible to get out of China, basically, and travel? Uh, is he not playing for other reasons? and? What is your opinion on Ding, and should he be given a pass to the candidates if a spot becomes available? All of this is sort of by presidential. No, that actually is not true, right? Because uh, there is a very uh, defined way of replacing people in the candidates if people drop out. Right. We're not talking about the one specific outcome there, because there is, a, I think, a very officially announced ethics and disciplinary committee hearing. Uh, on uh, on the topic of Sergei's participation, which right. uh, is is the one that we're discussing here, mm -hmm. uh, and then I think it becomes actually it kind of weirdly becomes the point where uh, Ding currently does not have enough games to be on the active list. Oh wow! I think this is what it comes down to because I think the replacement comes from the rating list, and to be on the rating list, you need to have played games. And because of the COVID situation and everything else, uh, Ding, uh, he had to play this kind of a small match against Lu Shangle to even be uh, 
eligible for the Grand Prix series are uh, okay. uh, becoming inactive through not playing any classical, apart from obviously the the more than one year long candidates tournament which he played in. Uh, so it might actually turn on whether he can get classical games of chess in the meantime. Um, I, I mean, I think that the, the, the kind of this tournament with Ding in it is very, very interesting and becomes sort of more interesting, but, um, all of this is so much up in the air that I don't really, don't really have a strong opinion. Uh, Rapport has not won yet, but he will win. Uh, the calculations from here are really not very difficult, Blue Balloon. Uh, just to, for, for those of you who may be joining just now, the current position is uh, this. The only way for Black to not lose immediately is to be prepared to meet the king coming to the A2 square, which will happen eventually by giving a check specifically from the C4 square to stop White from playing Queen B2 and interposing. And there is a way for white to avoid that. For instance, after queen d2 check, you go king a1, queen c1 check, king a2. Now any check from here instantly loses to queen b2. So you give a check from c4, we go king b2. There's only one check, and now we go king a1. And everything actually hinges on the fact that the bishop is controlling the f1 square here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if queen f1 check was a move that you could play here, it was a draw. But because it isn't possible, you have to give a check from either here or here. And then we go king a2. This check is unavailable. Next move, queen b2. And the game ends. Why is uh, Dimitri taking so long? Because, I mean, there's just no... Uh, I mean... Sort of, uh, you know, he, he doesn't want to be, you know, joining me on in, 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 in that particular club, you know. He... <laughs> you, what, you... the uh, resigning yeah, uh, yeah. 10 seconds club? Yeah, he could he could just play it out. He could just kind of make moves and see what happens. But he is just sitting there calculating over and over again, hoping for some kind of a miracle that he's missed. Because I'm pretty sure by this point he knows that he is absolutely lost because of that mechanism. But it's not fun. I mean, he he probably realizes that he must have been fine at some point today. And uh, yeah, you, you, you still have to sort of process the fact that you've lost the final now, there will not be a tie breaks day and your qualification for the candidates has been, you know, threatened. He still is isn't out of it. Like if he uh if he wins the the group of death, uh and once again a reminder for our viewers, uh the final the final uh third tournament of the Grand Prix series starts in eight days time or nine days time and there is a very, very specific one of the four groups features three of the top four, maybe top five, top four uh, ranked players currently. There's a group with Hikaru, Livon, and Andrei King in it. And if Dmitry somehow finds a way to win that group, he's not a favorite to win that group. Uh, we, you know, I, I really rate him as a chess player, but that is a very, very tough group. Yeah. But if he does win it, uh, he will be instantly on 17 points. Yeah. Oops. Uh, we might need some Fs in the chat. Because uh, our boy Peter is struggling today. We've all been there. Very frustrating when the software just doesn't behave. Let's get a few Fs in the chat. I'm going to pour one out for Peter. I've actually got a trolley next to me. I'm, I don't know what his tipple of choice is. What would Peter? What would I do at, at Peter? I think I think he's actually a teetotaler by this point. I think he doesn't drink. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about Andrekin though. Oh, you're talking about Andrekin. I'm saying, what would I do? No, we were doing F's in the chat because you went down again. You D you DC'd for a solid 10, 15 seconds, and nobody oh. heard a thing. That is very unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. We have no idea what you were saying. It was only you and your four walls and your doggo that heard anything that you just said. Okay, yeah. I mean, for me, yeah, the chat knows. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm very much a, a whiskey drinker, for preference. Oh, you're a good man. You're a great man. You really are a, you know, you can tell a lot about a man, and as long as you didn't say, like, you drank Stella Artois, we're, 
we're okay. Shots, shots fired at Yasser, right? Eh? What, what is Yasser? Yasser, Yasser, is... Yasser drinks Stella. Oh, is he a Stella guy, is he? Ah, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, well, we, we forgive Yasser. We, we... Well, yeah, we love Yasser. It's very, very... We love Yasser. Yeah. I mean, really being, being anti-Yasser is... No, oh, not, being anti is, is, is mm. not acceptable under any circumstances. Yeah. Um, he also drinks other stuff, but he definitely does drink Stella. He does. And yeah. and... He does. Um, now, uh, King A1 on the board, so... Yeah, yeah. I mean, this entire, this entire line will now happen. He will give checks from C1, C4, E2, and then he will resign, basically. Yeah. Yeah, all of this is just happening. And yeah, as I mentioned, once the moves start coming in, they come in th sort of thick and fast because there isn't really very much choice anymore. Black just gives whatever checks, don't lose immediately, and then those checks stop because they all start losing immediately. Yeah, queen c4 check, king b2, yeah. All of this all of this will now happen, and then I I'm guessing queen e2, king a1, and he resigns. I don't think there's much point in giving any... Yeah, queen e2, king a1 on the board. And we will get a resignation very, very shortly. Uh, and uh, a few more Fs in the chat coming for our dear friend. But it's a good time to uh, for, for, for the software to fail because uh, it is all she wrote. And Dimitri, as Peter was saying, is going to have to really cause uh, quite the stir in Berlin to win that group of death. To win that group of death in Berlin is going to be uh, a, a real task, but it's doable. He's shown he's capable. Uh, so Dimitri can do it. And... Mm, yep. Defin definitely not out of it, but yeah, will be, will be very, very difficult. And uh, yeah, that group would be a lot of fun to watch yeah it really less was. less fun to play and i have to say because like n none of them are now guaranteed anything hikaru is obviously in the best spot because simply because he has more points but kind of needs to get out of groups because 17 might not be enough if he if he finishes second in that group he is he is not guaranteed very much he's not in the poor spot but he's definitely under severe pressure on 17 points then yeah Agreed. Agreed. So, um, yeah, I want to say it's been uh, it's been a pleasure to to have been uh, with with you guys today and commentating on this very interesting, unusual game. Thank you so much for hanging out. Remember, we still have some offers. Let's get them in before this all ends. First and foremost, 40% off your premium membership use code Grand Prix 2022. Second, my, we've got the new series on Team Magnus's, uh, well, I mean, the, the match and the core components of Team Magnus, namely Jan Gustafsson, Lauren Fresson, Peter Heiner Nielsen, all uh, talking about the road to Dubai and what happened in Dubai and Magnus's victory. And then last but not least, my latest series for Chess 24, Judith Polgar, the greatest of all time. I've chosen 10 of her fantastic, the most noteworthy games in honor of the, well, the one of my chess idols and somebody who is a dear friend, Judith Polgar, uh, please make sure you check that series out as well. So lots for you guys to do. I don't believe Dimitri has resigned yet, but not, not yet. But he will. He will soonish because yeah, he. I mean, he is not remotely known for you know being impolite and not behaving correctly over the board. And yeah, by this point, he he knows, and he's also waited long enough for to be shown the. Uh, you know, the correct setup for avoiding the perpetual. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not really expecting him to prolong this much longer for, for, for too much. Uh, yeah, it's it's just like absolutely trivial from this point onwards. Should not be, should not be a problem at all. 
Yes, sir. Uh, and that's about all we got. Uh, let's see here. Chat. Uh, Judith, greatest of all time. How long was she? How long was she world champion? I meant in the sense of uh, the greatest woman player of all time. Um, she never won the women's world championship because she never had to demonstrate that she was the strongest woman player of all time. It was so blatantly clear because she was obviously top ten in the world in general. Yeah. So she never participated. Very, very early in her career, I think she made a very conscious decision. He played Queen of Wild Check here, which is kind of that's fun. cute. Just yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as long yeah. as as long as this is played like with a chuckle and a smile, it's yeah fine. Like if you if you do this in a blitz game on on two seconds, it is considered mm -hmm. it is considered to, it's slightly frowned upon. But uh, yeah, doing in a classical doing doing it in a classical game against twenty four minutes, you are not really trying to angle shoot or anything. You're just kind of sharing a private joke with your opponent about the importance of the F one square there. Uh, so yeah, well, very kind of a fitting conclusion to the entire thing. Uh, well done to Dmitri for you know maintaining a sense of humor through what must be a, a very very disappointing end to today's round. And uh, yeah, Berlin starts on twenty second. On yeah, the... nine days away. I'm. Uh, you're not. Are you commentating on it? What's the... uh, I mean, once again, very difficult to make any kind of long term plans. Okay. But as things currently stand, there will be commentary for the knockout phase, not for the pools. Oh, because, I see. Because it clashes with the second leg of the uh, the, the Magnus Chess Storm. Got it. Understood. Understood. Congratulations, Ricard Rapport, winner. He wins thirty six thousand euro as well. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, that's a lovely score uh, for Ricard. Uh, that's beautiful. So congratulations to him. Nice little bonus there and a mortal lock for the candidates. Well, I mean, let's not jinx him so hard. He still has like a you know, as, as anyone who has played BGs over the last couple of metas knows. Yeah. You know, a six percent not to qualify is a lot of percentage. Yeah, points. that's that. Yeah, if I if I jinxed him, I'd feel pretty bad. Let's call him a big, big, big favorite. That's fair. He's a big favorite to qualify with uh, something in the region of ninety four percent. But it is down to all of the other guys playing in Berlin, including the loser of today's final, Dimitri Andrekin, who still has a chance. No less, I believe, than seven players who can grab that second spot, which is obviously uh, absolutely unbelievable. Hikaru, Levon, Dimitri, Vidit. I oh, know Vidit can't, I believe. I, but, but I believe Anish Lenier and MVL can, if my, uh, if my interpretation is correct there. Um, Peter is back and forth and back and forth. So this yeah. is probably a great moment for us to actually wrap things up. Thank you so much for joining us today everybody in chat everybody watching um and yeah it's uh it's ricard's day very much he took Absolutely. a bit of a gamble and it paid off fair play he's been playing brilliant chess for a while now fully deserves a victory no question about it being the most consistent player in the tournament and um is this going to be his big breakthrough finally after years we all know how talented he is. We all, we've all seen it. And now he's coming of age, maturity, uh, and uh, looks bright. His future is really, really, really one that's going to be fascinating. So that's all from me, Peter. Any last words? Not, not really. I've, I've really enjoyed uh, doing this with you over the last couple yeah. of days. Thanks for, for hanging out with me. And yeah, thanks to, to, to all the chatters to, for, for keeping us company as well. Uh, yeah, there will be obviously this 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 channel will continue showing you chess content. But for now, we're done with Belgrade. Berlin starts in a bit, but uh, yeah, coverage of Berlin might be intermittent. It it might be. Nevertheless, we're here to stay. Take care. Stay safe. Uh, enjoy enjoy your life. You know, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Really important. Really important to enjoy it. That's all. Пока, пока. Чао. Hi everyone, welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson. 
and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach, and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here, and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the Hyologis. It's non-chess team. So I see some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand. And we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind-the-scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. <laughs>